How high will Clyde Edwards-Alaire go? What Will an NFC North receiver get his value pumped up, and how can the Joes keep up with such a talented pros field? Follow along with the live draft board tonight and listen to our analysis as we call the action from the 2020 FFPC Pros versus Joes Fat Boy Slim League Number 4 to see who will win a 2021 FFPC main event team. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour starts now. Let's begin now. Broadcast live and heard around the world. You are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. Hey, thanks a lot, Rob. Greetings and salutations to all the Balkaholics, Anger, Zach, and Addicts tuning in around the world. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com. I am your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman. My co-host is indeed the patron saint of fantasy football, the Dizzle Dave Gerzak. Tonight we have the fourth of six special episodes for you. It's the Pros vs. Joes, FFPC, Fat Boy Slim, League Number 4 draft tonight. We'll be covering it for the entire duration uh, of, uh, of the uh, draft. Uh, follow the draft board at youtube.com slash highstakesfantasyfootball. I want to give a shout-out to everybody in the chat room right now. You all can post your questions you might have in there. If you want to connect with us on Twitter, uh, the show is at HSFF Hour. I am at Eric Balkman. Dave is at David Gerzak. Uh, Facebook.com slash HSFF Hour is where to reach us there. And, of course, 347-426-3682. That's 347-GAME-OVA. If you want to get in touch with us and uh, talk with us tonight, you certainly can there. You can also email the show at the inbox, highstakesfantasyfootball at gmail.com. If you have any questions for us, now is the time to send them. Our producer and mutual friend Rob, our audio engineer, my best friend Bryce, will do their best to get those messages to us throughout the program tonight we have a uh, star-studded lineup as always for the pros versus joe's uh, action tonight leading things off is an ffpc joe it is uh robert and robbie russell uh, the father and son team drafting out of the one spot tonight Roto Ballers Josh Hayes is picking second. A 13-time FFPC Dynasty and Redraft champ, Paul Dietzman, is in the third spot behind him. Longtime pros versus Joe's drafter established the runs, Evan Silva. Former guest of the show, Frank LaPrade, drafting on his birthday tonight, by the way. Three-time FFPC and Football Guys League champ, picking out of the five-hole. John Paulson from 4 for 4 is in the sixth spot. Uh, FFPC best ball champ Todd Pavlik is in the seven, along with fake pigskin Shane Hallam in the eighth spot. Nine-time FFPC and Football Guys League champ Matt Groth picking ninth. Jeremy Browen, who I believe won uh, the pros versus, his pros versus Joe's league last year. I think he was the runner-up to Roach and Mueller last year, if I remember correctly. He's picking 10th tonight. Chandler and Dalton Saprina, the uh, former FFPC VP champs and real-life brothers, picking 11th. And rounding things off tonight is uh, Peter Overset from 4for4.com. And Dave, fireworks right out of the gate tonight at the 101. Um, we knew that this was a possibility uh, going forward when we got the Damian Williams news. The highest he had gone since the Damian Williams news in any FFPC best ball slim was the 103. Robert and Robbie Russell make him the 101 tonight. Clyde Edwards, Lair, this is not something you would do, I'm guessing, but in a contest where you're trying to beat out 11 other teams and you get nothing for second place, you can make the argument. Um, I cannot make the argument. I would, <laughs> I would have to take McCaffrey still, uh, but it's fun, man. I mean, you know, it's it's free for them. You know, they're main event players, so why not, man? Give it a shot. Have some fun. We had the FFPC um, uh, early draft slot announcement come out a, a couple hours ago, and if I remember correctly, those guys do not have a number one spot in the FFPC main event. That's so all right. That's making hay while the sun shines with yeah. their one pick tonight. 
uh, getting maybe, well, maybe they'll take Edwards Alaire in that it, in their main event too. It remains he, to be seen if he's there. If he's there, Christian McCaffrey uh, goes to Josh Hayes from Roto Baller at number two. Paul Dietzman then takes Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott to Evan Silva, and Alvin Kamara to Frank Laprade. So it sort of just pushed everybody down one spot because sort of chalk with the first five or picks two through five, I should say. Travis Kelsey to John Paulson after that is the first tight end off the board. First receiver is Michael Thomas at the 107. Seems a little, I wonder where his ADP is normally. Um, maybe it is right there. Yeah, 106. And then when you factor in the Edwards Hilaire, I guess that makes sense at the 107. Uh, Shane Hallen takes George Kittle at the 108, followed by Dalvin Cook to Matt Groth. Derek Henry at the 110 to Jeremy Brown, Miles Sanders to the Sabrinas, uh, as he goes at 111, rounding things off in the uh, first round here. Uh, Devontae Adams to Peter Overzet at the 112. Dave, is it just me, or, or does, does the addition of Edward Hilaire here at the 101 just really make this look like a strong, strong first round? <laughs> Doesn't it just make, like, Dalvin Cook all the way down there at, at – um, at 109, you have Derrick Henry dropping to 110, Miles Sanders 111. It just looks from top to bottom like a, a lot of – now some of these guys will bust. It just looks like a strong round. Yeah, I mean, you could – you know, with Damian Williams opting out, you could make the case that, the, you know, 9 through 12 picks actually get a lot better. Um, you know, so if you got your main event draft spot today and you didn't get a, you know, number one, two, or three pick or whatever pick you were, you know, kind of rooting for – A lot. Of, by the way, a lot of people like, you know, late, late picks. Uh, with Edward Solaire entering the first round, it really – it does like – Sharpen up the first round overall. Whole, Derek, whole way through. Yeah, Derrick Henry slipped a few picks tonight, but but nothing too crazy as I look at, um, you know, how the top 12 has been uh, according to ADP for the FFPC best balls. And which, by the way, give a shout-out to Darren Armani at Fantasy Mojo on Twitter. If you are playing in the FFPC and have not checked out FantasyMojo.com, you are doing it wrong, as the kids say. Make sure you are uh, tapping into all the draft boards, all the uh, ADP data there at FantasyMojo.com. Shout-out to him. He helps put together the Pros vs. Joe's contest each and every year as well. Um, there was one name that did not go in the first round that was somewhat surprising to me, maybe not, um, and we'll get to that here as we uh, continue our analysis of round two. Uh, Overzet is uh, the only team to start off receiver-receiver tonight as he takes Chris Godwin at the 201, Kenyon Drake to the Suprinas at 202, Tyree Kill off the board at 203 to Jeremy Brown. He goes uh, running back receiver to start, uh, as did uh, a few other teams here. Tyreek Hill to Jeremy Brown at the 203. Uh, Joe Mixon off the board after that to um, to uh, Matt Groth. That's the, the player I wanted to talk about, Dave. He Matt, norm- Matt Groth, by the way, just getting gifted stuff left and right so far in this draft. Yeah, he gets, he gets Dalvin Cook at the one. I wonder if it, there probably won't be another Cook-Mixon start in pros versus Joe's. It, I mean, I guess it could happen tomorrow or Tuesday, but... I mean, highly unlikely. We have not seen that happen yet. So congratulations to Matt Groth there. Cook and Mixon is how he starts off. Shane Hallam gets Josh Jacobs uh, in the second round at the 205, followed by Nick Chubb to Todd Pavlik to go with his Michael Thomas pick in the first round. Austin Eckler to John Paulson as he goes tight end running back to start. Julio Jones to Frank Laprade. That's a nice little value there. Aaron Jones after that, back-to-back Joneses. Uh, the latter going to Evan Silva, followed by uh, a, a pair of, uh, players that were traded for each other in the offseason. You had DeAndre Hopkins going from Houston to Arizona. He goes to Paul Dietzman here at the 210. David Johnson goes from Arizona to Houston. And he goes to Josh Hayes at the 211, followed by Zach Ertz at the 212. So the third tight end uh, off the board tonight is somebody that we haven't seen go as the uh, third tight end off the board previously in the pros versus Joes. Uh, Zach Ertz, the final pick of uh at the 212 tonight uh henry muto wants to know if pete uh Overzet is using his randomizer wheel picking uh from the from the 12 spot tonight that doesn't seem too random adams and godwin makes some sense there uh no i'm just i'm guessing he wants to go he wants to go back to the zero rb stuff and that's where he that's kind of where he was at adams and godwin are the two guys he likes bust what do you make of a best like a zero rb in a slim format where it's not a managed league is that see you've never I don't think you've ever really done too many zero RB teams normally in managed leagues. Am I correct in saying that or am I wrong? Um, not a true not a true zero RB. Right. You know, there's all these people who call it modified, which really means it's not. Uh, <laughs> right. So you know, so no, not not really. I mean, I've done it a few times, but you know, here and there in Kentucky. Yeah, I, I had, I had, but I managed I, leagues, right? You've never yeah. done it in a best ball, right? 
Um, no, I mean, I, it's, so, it's so rare that I play best ball because I'm, you know, in fact, we're, they're getting rid of the, the draft masters, whatever they call right. it in Kentucky. Yeah. So I don't even know if I'll have any best ball leagues at all. Um, from a, from a stri- anyway, strategic standpoint yeah. is, is you don't really see it as much in slims and, and in classic best balls. I don't feel like. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it classic best ball. Cause there's a classic and there's a best. Ball. Sorry. I, um, um, regular, traditional, yes, traditional best ball. Uh, you don't because people pound RVs. So it really gets to be challenging if you take, even if you take four outstanding receivers and you're going to get four really, really good receivers or five or four in a tight end or whatever, uh, then you really have to hit on those running backs. And instead of taking, you know, like in a managed league, maybe you're taking running backs 30 to 40 or 40 to 50, you're taking running backs 50 to 60 and 60 to 70, you know, so it gets to be a lot tougher. Dave, Aaron Jones tied for the league lead in rushing touchdowns with one Christian McCaffrey this year. Christian McCaffrey, I would say, is the, um, is, is the consensus 101, but he's only the consensus 101 if you don't lump Robert and Robbie Russell into the consensus, and I think you have to. But McCaffrey basically goes 101 or 102. Why is Aaron Jones going so late when the Packers did nothing to upgrade the receivers? They lose Devin Funchess. Uh, you know Aaron Jones is going to be at the forefront of them moving the ball. Why are... are, are people and, and drafters letting him slip now he tonight he goes at the 209 to evan silva on average uh, in this format he normally goes at the 207 is it just people just expecting a huge touchdown regression or what is it i think a huge touchdown regression is what they think uh, he's a non-pedigree back they brought in aj dillon it's a new you know new management team so that you know so uh, so I, and they don't want to pay him long term so maybe they, they don't think that much of him or whatever that reason is I personally do think he's undervalued. I think mm-hmm. that, I think he's a really nice pick in the late second. In fact, I, I I would rather have him personally than Nick Chubb myself. I mean, he, he generally goes a little bit before him. In true American fashion, Dave, Americans are famous. Well, they're famous for a lot of things, but I think one of the things Americans are famous for is saying something and then doing the exact opposite. How often have I been on this show saying how I want to stay away from Aaron Jones this year? I'm not really interested in drafting him for the reasons of Dylan, the reasons that you mentioned. Um, and, and the fact that, that he has had some knee issues in the past as well. And I got to tell you, I probably own three or four uh, Aaron Jones teams already this season <laughs> in, on August 2nd. It, I don't, maybe I, I guess I do like him at this point, or maybe I just like the value of him here. Um, we haven't talked a ton about DeAndre Hopkins, and, and the reason I bring this up is he goes at the 210 tonight to Paul Dietzman. Uh, historically, when receivers switch from team to team, uh, they usually do not play up to what we have seen them play up to uh, in their career that first year with the new team. And I think with this weird offseason, uh, that could be even exacerbated more uh, with Hopkins this year. Are you on board with, I mean, given how talented Hopkins is, given that he has a uh, what looks like a pretty talented quarterback throwing to him, you still on board with Hopkins in the second round this year? Um, I, if I, if I was guessing, I'm guessing I'd probably end up with somebody else, uh, than Hopkins, but you know, I don't totally hate him or anything like that. It's just, uh, I do feel like switching to a new team, Kyler Murray, you don't really know, you know, he had a decent season last year, but he, you know, he's, it's not like they, he, he, he's going to be able to establish the same connection that Hopkins had with Deshaun Watson. And, uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I think that there is just some risk with the switching of teams and switching of offenses and all that. Um, the two, he, he kind of basically goes right around two other receivers, and I think you like both these guys better than Hopkins. You would rather have Julio Jones and Chris Godwin than DeAndre Hopkins this year? I would, yeah. And then, okay. But in this case, you know, in this draft in particular, uh, Hopkins was the last of those top six to go. So then if I'm looking receiver, I do like him better than Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, and, you know, all, you know, all those. I shouldn't say all those guys. I mean, there's guys I like similarly that are a lot cheaper, like DJ Moore. I think Juju has the potential to be up there, but I mean, I wouldn't pay that Hopkins price and Hopkins would be, I think is safer than Juju. I would maybe look at running back. I mean, Aaron Jones went right before him. So if he was there, I would have considered him. And the guy that uh, Dietzman got after him is another player I would have considered who I won't name and because you don't like when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not necessarily, I don't, but I know there's, other people who may be drafting and listening tonight that might not be a fan of that, Dave. Uh, let's get into the third round here as it just completed. Uh, the Russells take Mike Evans. Rainbow start there. Running back, tight end, receiver. Evans is the 301 tonight. The quarterback's cherry has been popped, and it is Patrick Mahomes once again over Lamar Jackson. 
for the number one quarterback tonight. He goes at the 302 to Josh Hayes, Todd Gurley to Paul Dietzman after that as his number two running back to go with Saquon Barkley. Amari Cooper to Evan Silver from uh, Establish the Run after that. Lamar Jackson then goes to Frank Laprade. Another rainbow start there. Kamara, Julio Jones, and Lamar Jackson. Truly elite at the top end of all those positions is Laprade. Uh, James Conner, the second running back drafted by John Paulson, back-to-back receivers then. Pavlik takes Smith-Schuster, and Hallam takes Galladay. Mark Andrews slips a little bit tonight. He goes at the 309, Dave, followed by Jonathan Taylor at the 310 to Jeremy Brown. Uh, DJ Moore and A.J. Brown, the initial brothers. Uh, DJ Moore to uh, the Supreme's as uh, they take him at the 311. And A.J. Brown at the 312 to Peter Overzet tonight. And without uh, getting too far into the fourth round here, Dave, Overs that does do uh, four straight receivers here, so you might be right on the zero RB aspect. I think, uh, yeah, I think he's uh, proving you correct there. All right, so uh, getting into this, um, Todd Gurley, what's the – okay, there's a non-zero chance that he does opt out this season, but I, I think you and I do not expect him to. At least I don't expect him to at this point. No, like he was talking crap, and he's, he's going to play. He's going to be fine. Okay. Um, Amari, in fact, he, he, you know, he went in the 303. He was going in the, he went in the fourth in some of those ones last week. We, that is, yeah. I mean, we t- that was like the story um, from, the, from the first two drafts is Gurley not going uh, all the way until the fourth. So it, it's pretty crazy. We have talked about Cowboys receivers uh, this year. Uh, they're number two last year, and then they're rookie this year. We have not talked about Amari Cooper. Now, I think we're very excited about the Dallas passing attack, Dave, quite a bit. But do, are, are you worried about Cooper maybe not paying off on a fourth-round value here with so many other talented pass catchers considering the offense that Mike McCarthy wants to run in Dallas? Actually, a third-round value is uh, what you meant to say because you went to the three. Oh, they went in the third round. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's more. I, I, I just don't think I'd like Cooper over – Player, over the players that went after him, Juju, Galladay, DJ Moore, those three in particular, because those three are the, kind of the number one alphas on their team, and I, they're, they're not that concerned about targets. Uh, you know, so, I, you know, Kenny Galladay, you know, Marvin Jones is pretty underrated, actually. So, I mean, I would say he's like a 1AA versus and then a 1B for Jones. So he's, he is a, a bit up there. But uh, Cooper has to do with Gallup and CeeDee Lamb, and that's, that's, there's definite competition for targets. And he does sometimes just disappear in games. And that's what always concerns me, especially in, in, a, in a best ball league. The one good thing about it is when he has a big game, a lot of times he scores 40 points for some reason. <laughs> right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of, I'm kind of i off Cooper probably a little bit. Um, have we talked about DJ Moore enough? Because uh, I know he was our hype guy last year, new quarterback for him this year. He goes tonight at, at, the, uh, at the 312 to the Chandler and, and Dalton Saprina. Um, is he, now, I know he, he had a great breakout season last year, Dave. You think he's going to finish better than that this year with uh, – almost inarguably a better quarterback situation. Yeah. And he'll have more touchdowns for sure. Cause he hardly scored any last year. I think he's going to break off a few big ones. And uh, this being, you know, every season he improves. I think he's a really a uh, super talented player. So, so hard to tackle. And I just think that he's a real pros pro at wide receiver. I, I like TJ Moore a ton. AJ Brown tonight goes at the three twelve. on average in FFPC best ball slims over the last seven days, Dave, he had been going at the uh, four, Ten. So, I mean, I don't know if it's an overdraft. I mean, it's a round earlier, but you overs that knew he wasn't going to get him again uh, when it came back to him. It was a low volume passing offense for Tennessee last year, uh, an offense that had Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, Derrick Henry just bowling over everybody in that uh, backfield. Um, all those things should be true again this year, Dave. A.J. Brown will be on a low passing attack offense it is still going to have Tannehill throwing to him Um, or he's just still going to have Tannehill throwing to him. He's still going to have to deal with Derrick Henry getting, you know, 20, 25 touches a game. Um, When you look at AJ Brown, let's just put him at ADP tonight instead of where, where overs that took him. When you look at AJ Brown at the end of the fourth round, can you still buy into that? Because I mean, you you could make a pretty strong case that um, there's uh, some regression to the mean coming for Mr. Brown this year. Yeah, I would you counter that with the fact that he's only a second-year player and he's just destined to improve and do better. So I think that that's the that's the reason he can be looked at it being you know being taken ahead of uh, ahead of where you you would take him given all those other arguments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the the receiver round here, Dave. Fourth Apparently round. Apparently so. A ton of yellow here on the board. Which, by the way, uh, youtubecom slash fantasy football if you want to follow along with this live draft. It's streaming there. Uh, Calvin Ridley leads things off to Overzet as his number four receiver. Wow, that's filthy. Number four receivers 
Calvin Ridley. Uh, for a lot of teams, he's like their number two. Uh, Allen Robinson right after that to uh, Chandler and Dalton Saprina. Uh, Melvin Gordon, the third running back drafted by Jeremy Brown from Dynasty Football Factory. Adam Thielen off the board after that uh, to Matt Growth. Leonard Fournette is joining Josh Jacobs in the Shane Hallam Hallam's Hammers backfield as Fournette. Boy, a, a true hammer at running back there uh, is Fournette for Shane Hallam. Uh, four straight receivers, Cooper Cup to Todd Pavlik, Robert Woods to John Paulson, Odell Beckham to Frank LaPrad, Terry McLaurin to Evan Silva, Darren Waller to Paul Dietzman, and then a couple of receivers round out the round, uh, DK Metcalf to Josh Hayes, and then Cortland Sutton, the uh, Denver receiver, to the Russells at the 412. Um, Terry McLaurin, Dave, we, I know we talked about him. Um, I think it was a Friday night show we were talking about him. Um, but, again, we continue to see smart people take Terry McLaurin in the fourth round. Evan Silva is an analyst who, who not only plays in pros versus Joe's, he's had some successful FFPC main event runs uh, under his belt as well. So he knows what's going on. He takes McLaurin tonight. And, I, it, you know, say what you will about the, the offense, the target share is going to be out of this world for Terry McLaurin in Washington. Absolutely. I, I, I like the Terry McLaurin pick. Um, man, it just seems like that's the, – the, the, the volume of receivers at one, I just feel like there's a running back value, value that's falling in, in these spots, like right as this draft is unfolding right now. Um, I like McLaurin as a – as a player, I would rather get him in the fifth, but I mean, maybe he would have been, he might have been gone by then. From a, um, you know, playing the board standpoint, um, I, I think the, the narrative this year has been get your running backs early first couple of rounds because the, the receiver depth is just, it's so crazy. And we see a, a lot of running backs go off the board tonight, Dave. In the first two rounds, we saw, what was it? Uh, nine, 12, 15 running backs in the first 24 picks. There's a lot of running back action there for the teams that didn't roll with running backs early. And, and if you see this coming, like Overset could be ca- one of these guys cashing in on running backs here later on. And I think that's the thing that if you're drafting in a football guys, players championship, FFPC main event, you certainly want to have a strategy going in, but to be able to counter punch this and, and see that the receivers are slipping or the running backs are slipping. Maybe this is a, a chance to, to capitalize on that. You know, I agree with you, but I, you know, by this is what happens when you, when you kind of zero in on a strategy with the zero RV strategy, I mean, look at what his team would, you know, overs in particular, look at what his team would look like. You know, you can argue whoever you want, but let's just say you throw Leonard Fournette on his team instead of Ridley or A.J. Brown, you know, whatever one. Or if you like Melvin Gordon or you like Le'Veon Bell, one of the, whatever one of, the, one of those running backs you like, I just feel like that's just better. You know what I mean? Now, we'll see. There's more running backs coming. I mean, if, if there's not a running back run in the fifth round, he'll get a couple if he wants to go that direction. And he may want to go with tight end or whatever and maybe, you know, keep waiting. But I just feel like that that would have, I mean, you know, it would have been just nice for him because, I mean, why, what's what's Fournette's ADP, by the way? Do you, like, over the last week in 304, this – 304, 306? Yeah, over the last week in this uh, format, Fournette is 306. 306. So you're getting like a full half round of value, and you don't even have a running back on your team. So to me, that would have been a nice pickup for him. But, that, again, that's just my, my thinking. Hey, if you, uh, you all are listening to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour for the first time, I want to remind everybody that we do this show year-round. It normally airs Friday nights at 10, 9 Central. Uh, full on-demand streaming available for listening anytime via a variety of apps. And uh, don't forget to check out hsffhour.com where you can get the podcast uh, right there. Um, I'm not going to bore you. I know Dave will – see me if I list all these again, but the app store, unless it's Deezer, literally podcast. anywhere else you can find podcasts, wherever podcasts are found, except for Deezer, whatever that we're is. on there. Yeah. Deezer's big in Europe. I think we were talking about that. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, moving on here. Um, I don't think, so correct me if I'm wrong. We don't have to talk about him if we, if we talked about him before, but I continue to really like Allen Robinson this year. I think he's going to put up Buku numbers. Um, I don't think Mitchell Trubisky is going to be throwing him the football this year. I think in a perfect world, it will be Nick Foles. And I think Foles is better than Trubisky. And I think that's what, while typically we normally like a quote unquote sucky quarterback throwing to receivers like Robinson, cause they'll zero in on him and, um, and create a lot of targets for him and, and specifically target him because he's, you know, the security blanket. I think Nick Foles is going to keep the chains moving more this year for Chicago. And I like the fact that that will create not only more catches, more targets, more snaps for Robinson should create more touchdowns for him too, Dave. Yeah, I think so. I mean, even if Trubisky's throwing to him, he, you know, Trubisky might be a little bit better. I mean, there's always that possibility. Yeah. I love Allen Al- 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 Robinson. Another one of the players I'd be targeting at wide receiver and redraft this year, uh, you know, fine pick for Chandler, the Chandler boys. 
guys. Yeah, the Sabrina, Chandler, Chandler and Dalton. Chandler and yeah. Sabrina, like the name. It's, great. Uh, it's a great name. Do you have – just the last name, Sabrina, and then the, the brothers are Chandler and Dalton. Yeah. I mean, I don't care – now they're they're clearly talented, smart people. They could have been the stupidest people in the world. And names like that, you knew they were going to be successful. Their names sound fake. I don't even think they're real. Though. No, they're they're totally real. <laughs> they, they were. Uh, I I think uh, Chandler and Dalton Soprano were the guys who sold me the J.T. Marlin stock. Yeah, from they, uh, they, Boiler Room. They were hedge fund. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but, he's, he's my father. <laughs> let's get into the fifth round here. Um, they 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 called me. They marked me as a whale. They were right. <laughs> Evan Engram at the 501 tonight, for, as the uh, Russells are the first uh, team to double up on tight ends. They took Zach Ertz at the 212. Now Evan Engram at the 501 tonight. Le'Veon Bell goes to Josh Hayes. Chris Carson to Paul Dietzman at the 503. Our third quarterback tonight is a new name. I think um, we we've seen somebody else go off the board as the third quarterback uh, in pros versus Joes. Tonight it is Dak Prescott to Evan Silva. David Montgomery right after that to Frank LaPrade. Tyler Lockett to John Paulson. Mark Ingram, Raheem Mostert, Devin Singletary. Three straight running backs go to Pavlik, Hallam, and Growth, Stephon, respectively. Stephon Diggs to Jeremy Brown. Kareem Hunt making an appearance in the fifth round tonight to the Supremas. And then DJ Chark to Peter Overzet. And by the way I interpret zero RB, Dave, Overzet did indeed go zero RB tonight. Uh, and now he's loading up with uh, a running back here in the sixth round that we'll get to. Am I wrong not to be bullish on David Montgomery this year? I've n- I was not excited to draft him last year. I continue to be not excited to draft him again this year. Frank Laprade gets him tonight, Dave, at the 505. He normally, as far as his uh, ADP goes, as I'm trying to find it here, I apologize for this, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is riveting radio. David Montgomery normally goes at the 408, so pretty good value here for Montgomery. Still not excited about him, Dave. Well, I mean, he is a, he's a three-down back on – well, not a three-down back. He's a two-and-a-half down back. Would you make the argument with, uh, you know, um, staying on third downs occasionally? Not really. Two and a half, I think, is apropos. Yeah, I think he, that's, he has yeah. some pass catching. Yes, he does. But there's another back that uh, uh, commands a lot of targets on the backfield. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I just am not a huge fan of his talent. I didn't own him much last year. I think dynasty owners that drafted him are a little bit disappointed, or maybe a lot of bit disappointed in him so far. And it seems like the team wasn't all that happy with him either. So, uh, but it was. There is. I mean, given who else is available, I think. Uh, he's one person I would have considered. I also would have looked at Kareem Hunt or Singletary myself. I mean, or even Moster. I mean, I don't know. You know, so you could make the case for a lot of those players. Yeah, I think you could too. But yeah, any of those running backs that went after Montgomery, I, I, I think I could have got on board with there uh, for uh, for Laprad. Not ripping his team because I think his start was phenomenal. Um, getting back to Overs at the Peter Overs at discussion, who who's with four for four dot com. Uh, Henry Muto points out in the chat room. Uh, wide receiver early really isn't the strategy that usually wins best ball formats, which is what Overzet did tonight. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Jimmy Wagner also chiming in that best ball is a totally different strategy than like a regular managed league. Um, Cam Akers was the selection in the sixth round. We will get to that uh, and to see what Overzet puts together uh, for, after that. For what it's worth, I, I thought char- the chart pick, I thought if just on any random team at 512 was a nice pick. I mean, it, it seems like Chark usually goes in the early fifth. Actually, five twelve is his ADP. Is it really? Okay. Seven days, so he got him right at that same spot. All right, spot. well, there you go. So, so he right. has gone as high as the five hundred one. So okay. yeah, right. I so mean, there there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Do you? Okay, so th- this gets back to the 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 sort of um, AJ Brown argument a little bit. Is is Chark? And by the way, they ended up on the same team. Chark and Brown both playing on what should be low volume passing offenses. Unless you think Jacksonville is a train wreck, Dave and Gardner Minshew's slinging it all, all over the field in the second half of the games this year. Well, Minshew got added to the COVID-19 list today, actually, so he's going to be out for a couple of weeks probably. But, you know, if he should be back, be fine. You know, I don't think there'll be any issue there. Yeah, look, I don't really think I don't really think Chark is much worse than A.J. Brown necessarily myself. I have him fairly close. Really? To okay. Sure. I, 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 it, I like Chark's talents a lot. And, and uh, what, well, let's... What? Nothing. I want to talk about players that haven't been drafted. We'll get later, later on into that. Um, you also like the Stephon Diggs pick, I'm assuming, at 5'10 to Brown as, as he gets him to pair with uh, Tyreek Hill already having three receiver running backs on his team? Yeah, I mean, you think Josh Allen's going to – his accuracy did, did get a little bit better last year. A little year. bit, yep. So I wonder if he'll get a little bit better again. I wonder if Diggs is the type of guy that you necessarily need to be all that accurate for. 
Because he's just always open. Or he's he's right? fast. He's he's his catch. It's not like he's got a tiny catch radius. I don't know. Yeah, I just it's not like he has DK Metcalf, so either. That, that also a great point of course, too. Who does probably right? Very few. Um, plus, I think with with Metcalf's muscles, I just think like he's just he's able to go Mister Fantastic on a lot of these fifty fifty balls and just bring them and in. Just be small and get them off. Um, I did. I mean, okay. So this is an extraordinarily small sample size, but I went to the Packers Seahawks playoff game last year, and we were we got. Um, uh, my my local co-host and I for our afternoon uh, radio show we got field passes so we were down on the field and we couldn't go to the Packers end we had to stay on the Seahawks end and um, we we sat in the corner of the end zone watching Russell Wilson uh, throw these fades and these passes to Chark now granted there's no um or not Chark uh, Metcalf Metcalf granted there was no um, defense and Chark wasn't he came Metcalf, Metcalf wasn't what maybe Chark was there I don't know maybe I'm misremembering it Metcalf was not wearing pads but that guy I mean just some of the catches he was you know they always show the old Odell Beckham mm-hmm. uh, catches at pregame some of the catches that Metcalf were ma- was making was just uh, ridiculous nice. all right so nice. let's get into the sixth round here I already told you about Cam Akers we had four receivers go off the board after that Hollywood Brown to the Suprinas uh Keenan Allen to Jeremy Brown uh then you have T.Y. Hilton as the number two receiver drafted by Matt Groth at the 604 tonight Tyler Boyd is the number two receiver for Shane Hallam like that pick there uh at the 605 we have a um Hayden Hurst sighting Dave he's the number six tight end off the board the number one tight end for Todd Pavlik here uh trio receivers after that Devontae Parker is the third receiver drafted by John Paulson here tonight at the 607. You have Michael Gallup off the board to Frank LaPrade as his number three uh, receiver. And then um, the immortal Will Fuller, the guy that just, I, you know, I get it. He's like Samuel L. Jackson and Unbreakable. Uh, yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly what he is. He's gl- uh, Glass, isn't that his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, Glass, glass yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will Glass Fuller, um, yeah, taken by Evan Silva. By the way, Evan Silva. Uh, knows a lot more about fantasy football than I will. So I'll check to his um, knowledge on this one, but not a fan. You won't find Will Fuller on any of my teams. He can call in. Evan can call in. and uh, That would be great. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, it'll be one of those things like, yeah, I was doing a gritting my teeth, but, uh, but you know, it just, I felt like it was a bit made sense there. <laughs> JK Dobbins to uh, Paul Dietzman. He is the number four running back drafted by uh, the cat like reflexes team there at the, 6'10", Darius Geis to Josh Hayes, and then DeAndre Swift, Dave, falling tonight to the Russells. Nice little value pick there yep. at the 6'12". DeAndre Swift, you want to take a guess at what his normal ADP is? Uh, 509. He normally goes at the – got to spell his name right. Sorry, this is terrible. Swift. Yeah, S-W-I. I know. I was trying to spell his whole name like a stone. 504. Wow. Is where he and normally Dobby, goes. Dobby, you know, was a nice little pickup, too. Yeah, Dobbin slipped a little bit tonight, too. He normally goes at the 604. All right. Uh, so he goes at the 610 tonight. That's a half round of value there for Paul Dietzman. Which one do you like better? You like Swift over Dobbins, right? Uh, yeah, you know, just uh, because he's not competing against Mark Ingram, but against Carrion Johnson. So yeah. and, and you don't like the other half of the Lions backfield, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Right, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah. I, you know, I've seen Dobbins' highlights actually recently. I mean, the guy is a beast. He's pretty awesome. So I, he's got, he's gonna be a really good running back next year. I'm not sure about this year. If he's gonna get enough carries, but he might. I wonder what Mark Ingram's contract's like. Yeah, whatever they're, it is, they're just they'll, they'll just good. find a way out if if he if and Dobbins they shows they can't, out. They can't have that. I mean, they can't have that much dead money next year where they can't afford to get rid of him. I mean, unless Ingram signs some sort of player friendly deal or you know he decides he wants to stay with the team to try and win a Super Bowl but if he decides any of that you would think that he would be taking a back seat probably that. relegated to second yeah. tier status next year I would guess all right so Keenan Allen Dave normally goes at the 604 he goes at the 603 tonight you have made your thoughts on his role in that Chargers running based offense this year well known is 603 is that late enough for you to get on the Keenan Allen train or are you still waving bye to everybody on it at the station? <laughs> um, I'd probably there's one other player I'd rather have than him. Um, maybe two actually that went after him, and that's about it. But I, I don't, I mean, if I had, I wouldn't be totally mad if I had him on my team, but I prefer both players that went right after him, T.Y. Hilton and Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I like a lot of the players in this round actually. Yeah, that was uh, a good round. I mean, even the Marquise Brown thing, you know, I've 
said that he's only had a few good games, but I mean, when he was really wide open in a lot of those, I mean, those games, I mean, he, if he's healthy this year, he could really have an explosive season. Uh, Henry Muto pointing out uh, in the uh, BTR chat right now that Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson uh, falling to the fifth never happens in his drafts. And I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really seen that too much this year either. Yeah. Usually early fourth. Uh, yeah. Le'Veon Bell, Nor- actually Dave, over the last uh, seven days, three eleven, three twelve, yep. respectively for Bell and Carson. And the furthest that those guys have slipped, 409 and 410 in two, set, and a, two and a half dozen drafts over the last week. Setting records. That's setting record records. Setting. On pro, this is why you tune into the pros versus Joe's here on so, the high stakes fantasy Josh, football. Josh Hazen, sorry to interrupt you there. Josh Hayes and Paul Deesman thank uh, Peter Overzet for starting, you know, going crazy on the receivers. <laughs> right. Yeah. And everyone else is following his receiver lead. And then, and then even they, you know, oddly enough, I, you know, I found it interesting that they let Bell and Carson fall, they, taking Waller and Metcalf in the fourth round, uh, and then they still end up getting him. You will not see Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson as the number three running back for many teams this year. However, that is the role they will be playing for Josh Hayes and Paul Dietzman, respectively. Getting into the seventh round, Dave, Kyler Murray off the board at the 701. To, to me, that strikes that's pretty good value there, too. I'm not an early quarterback guy, but, man, that is... Nice. 603 is where he normally goes. So you get him at a 701 tonight. Brandon Cooks to Josh Hayes after that is his number two wideout. Deshaun Watson going to Paul Dietzman at the 703. Gronkowski, comma, Rob, making a sighting to, tonight for Evan Silva's established the run squad at 704. Ronald Jones off the board after that as the number three running back drafted by Frank LaPrade. A.J. Green, the fourth wideout selected by four for fours, John Paulson. Woods, Lockett, Parker, and now A.J. Green. Russell Wilson is the third quarterback selected in round seven, the first one by Tom Pavlik tonight at the 7 uh, excuse me, 7.07, yes. Deontay Johnson, the uh, Steelers' number two wide receiver, uh, goes to Shane Hallam, Jarvis Landry right after that to Matt Groth as his third wideout. Josh Allen to Jeremy Brown as his number one quarterback. A pair of tight ends end the round. Tyler Higby to Chandler and Dalton Saprina. Hunter Henry off the board at 712 to Peter Overzet uh, as he he has now made eight picks and only one of them is a running back. This will be juicy and delicious to follow for the remainder of this uh, it's not, of this draft. Let's not feed him too much here. We've given him. Well, I'm not saying time. I'm not saying it's something that I would be praising no, I'm him saying, for. I'm saying we just I don't want to talk about his team the whole damn draft. Well, whole damn but he, remember he he sort of like set the trend here. Uh, right, and and, 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 talking about and by the way, did you notice too? I, I think a lot of teams now are getting their third and fourth receiver uh, now in, in the sixth and seventh round too. So we're seeing a lot of teams get those wide receivers before the value drops off on those tiers, Dave. Sure. Uh, going to the six, five, one now on the uh, phone lines here. I want to take uh, this phone call. You are now on the air with Dave and Balky. Who's this? This is Matt Gross, team number nine. Matt. It is. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Good to hear from you. We talked about how your your first two picks were were pretty good values. How excited were you to start off with a Cook Mixon team tonight? Yeah, I never started with that before. I just took what the value you know, <laughs> felt to me. So I, uh, I got lucky. I, I mean, I'm from I do Minnesota like that. originally, so I'm a Cook fan. Oh, that's great. And then you get a, a, another. I mean, we didn't really talk about this too much, Dave, but Mark Andrews slips too. To Matt tonight, and and I don't know if that was part of your plan, thinking that you were going to get Matt, uh, Mark Andrews at in, at the three oh nine tonight, uh, Matt. But that sort of decision made itself for you when he was on the clock, when he was on the board, when you were on the clock. Yeah, I was actually hoping that Ertz would fall somehow. Somehow he sometimes slips past Andrews, but I uh, like Andrews. Yeah, wasn't in the cards tonight. Yeah, I like Andrews better than. If you had your your pick between Andrews and Ertz, would you? Which one would you rather have this year? I normally draft Mark Andrews first, but I was hoping normally Mark goes early, the first half of round three. You know, so I wasn't thinking now I was going to get him. Matt, now that you're eight rounds into this, uh, you know, basically almost halfway done, how, uh, how happy with your draft are you so far? I mean, this is obviously you've already made mention that you have some players on this squad that you didn't envision on, that were going to be on your team tonight. So how, as you look at your team as a whole, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I like it pretty good. I think it started out pretty good. I think I'm, I'm a, normally I'm a running back guy, but uh, I'm going to try this way a little bit, a little more balanced. But I like grabbing my Matt tight ends Wilson. if I can get them earlier. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I'm with you on that for sure. It always makes things easier. We can get one of those elite tight ends early. Matt Groth chiming in on the high stakes fantasy football hour tonight, drafting ninth in the pros versus Joe's uh, 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 number four, Fat Boy Slim. What do you think of, of um, Team 12, Peter Overzet? He's, he starts off with the five receivers. Do you think that that really directly affected what the other 11 teams were doing, seeing what he was doing? Well, I think it, well, it takes up a lot of the, receiver, uh, the receivers and left running backs. That's why you get good value, obviously, in round five. I've never seen that. Maybe the late fourth round for those. And normally it's David Johnson that somehow slips, but – I haven't seen Bell or Carson go that late. That was interesting. We were talking about that earlier, too, to see, you know, three guys that have been so fundamental in getting volume for their respective teams to have them slip to the fifth round. I don't don't think either of us uh, saw that coming tonight regarding those guys. Um, How concerned are you about a timeshare in Buffalo, Matt? I know you took Devin Singletary in in the fifth round um, without, you know, playing too many of your cards here. Singletary in the fifth. Are you on board with just him, or do you think there's another piece that needs to be added in this type of format? Yeah, I need to add somebody else. I mean, I'm hoping that he might get a few more pass-catching opportunities. Obviously, I think he probably will lose some of the goal line touches, but I think he'll play more right away just because, you know, the rookies, it's going to be hard starting them right away and and, uh, making them do some pass pro on, like, you know, certain things, so. Matt, when you when you were planning for this draft and, and strategizing, did you have a rough set number at each position in mind that, that you wanted to grab, uh, knowing that this is not a managed league, that it's, it's a set it and forget it type thing? Uh, did you have a set number at each position in mind, or are you kind of fluid on that? It's pretty much set. The only thing, obviously, if you grab one position and it's really high, I might only grab a couple of those, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no question. Right. I'm not Matt, gonna give it away. Obviously people know. Yes, yes, they do. And and I, we certainly appreciate you bringing the insight uh, to the table here tonight. Appreciate you calling in. Uh, good luck not only the rest of the way in, in pros versus Joe's this year, but good luck in the FFPC main event and all your drafts this summer. Thanks so much for chiming in, dude. Yep, thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Mac Mac Roth, you do the same, man. Mac Roth chiming in tonight here from the nine spot. Uh, from uh, one, I guess one of our favorite starts in this draft so far with, with some of the value that fell to him. And, and I think he was a little surprised Dave, at the value that was falling to him as well. And just in general, you know, he talked about David Johnson too and, and Bell and Carson. A lot of good value uh, at the running back position falling in this draft. Yep, for sure. Let's talk, where do we leave off? We got through the seventh round, I believe. Yeah, let's lead off with the eighth round here, Dave. As Overzet goes back-to-back tight ends, he goes Hunter Henry at the 7-12, TJ Hawkinson at the 801. Julian Edelman to Chandler and Dalton Saprina there. Darius Slayton off the board as the number four receiver to Jeremy Brown. And Mike Jasicki is uh, Mac, uh, Mac Rose pick at the, um, excuse me, 804 tonight. You have three straight receivers go off the board after that. It's Emmanuel Sanders to Shane Hallam. It's Sterling Shepard to Todd Pavlik. And then it's Marvin Jones to John Paulson. Jared Cook to uh, Frank LaPrade. That's his number one tight end. Jamison Crowder off the board to Evan Silva as his number four receiver. Austin Hooper selected tonight at the 810. Hooper backing up Darren Waller for Paul Dietzman at that position. Rashad Perriman, the number three wideout for Josh Hayes. And then Noah Fant, the first team to get two tight ends, is also the first team to get three tight ends as Noah Fant goes off the board to the 812. Boy, those Russells, Dave, they're completely unpredictable. We don't know where they're going. They're cagey. They are cagey. Um, you have been the Marvin Jones fanboy of this show. I know you like him more than me. Given that he goes now, this is a slim format, obviously, but given that he goes tonight, Dave, at the 807, and knowing that his best ball slim ADP over the last week is at the 904, do you envision yourself with a lot of Marvin Jones teams this year? <laughs> So given that he was drafted at 807 tonight and that he normally goes at the 904. In the slim, yeah. Do I envision myself? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, sure, some, some, somewhat. I don't know. 807 does seem a little bit early. But, uh, but, if, but he, if he goes on average at 904, I feel like this, this guy is going to be like your number four receiver on a lot of your squad this year, given how much you like. And you probably won't have Galladay in a lot of spots. He could be, yeah. I'm trying to think of the other thing I was – all right, so – 
we have two Giants receivers off the board in, in this round. Uh, Sterling Shepard to Pavlik, and then Darius Slayton before him goes to Jeremy Brown. Do you have a uh, favorite receiver? Is it one of those two, or is it the other guy um, that, that you would rather have when you take draft value into account for Giants receivers this year? Well, if I were to take one of them, uh, one of the three, I would take Darius Slayton. Uh, I feel like I know we know what Sterling Shepard is and what he's done in, in the past, and so it's not all that great. Uh, and then there's the other player who's more of a slot guy. And Slayton, you know, did really well as a rookie, and he's got some upside. So I think I'd go Slayton if, if, if I were to choose one of those three. Right, yeah. I find, you know, again, back to Marvin Jones, I probably would take Jones over either of those guys, I, but I would take Edelman and Sanders over Jones, although not by a lot. Um. <laughs> So Lance Turbis is in the chat room on Blog Talk Radio right now chiming in. Imaginary rope adult, pick Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at 101 and then set the fake trap of hoping a team tries to block the CEH Mahomes connection. Is It was a statement tonight about that. And Mahomes, it, there was no Mahomes, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire uh, selection. He had the shot at him. He, he, well, he did, yeah. And uh, he passed on him twice as Mahomes goes to Josh Hayes at the 302 tonight. Um, there was one more thing I was, oh, Emmanuel Sanders, Dave, we, we, we haven't talked about him a lot. He goes tonight at the eight Oh five to Shane Hallam. And I'm just kind of curious because this guy is, has bounced around the league ever since he, he left Pittsburgh, you know, he's in Denver, then he was in uh, San Francisco. Now he's in new Orleans, but wherever he's been, he's produced. And I know Michael Thomas, the target monster is opposite him. But I'm starting to like Emmanuel Sanders this year, even though, you know, you have 41-year-old Drew Brees sling in the rock. I think there's some fantasy value there. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I prefer that pick to the pick uh, that Shane made right, you know, in the, the round earlier with Deontay Johnson. I, I, I think Sanders is a really nice, uh, nice value in that eighth round. I feel like Sanders is going to have some spike weeks this year in, in that high-powered New Orleans offense for sure. I just feel like the veterans, you know, like your A.J. Greens, Landry's, Edelman, Sanders, Jones, those, I, you know, even Crowder to, to some extent. Um, those guys are nice values in the, that, that spot. You know, you can kind of count on them to some extent. We talked about Jonathan Taylor or the, the rookies uh, slipping a little bit tonight. We did not mention Jonathan Taylor among those. He actually went right at ADP tonight to, to Jeremy Brown at the 310. Uh, that was one other thing I want to bring up on the show. I'm going to go to the 412 right now as we head back out to the phone lines. You are on the air. Go ahead, Dave. That's Pittsburgh, I think. Pittsburgh. All right. Well, let's go to potentially Pittsburgh. You're on the HSF at Power. You're on with Dave and Balky. Who is this? Uh, it's Shane Hallam from FakePigskin.com. How's it going? Shane, it is going good. More importantly, how's it going for you as we are now halfway done with your draft? How's it looking from the eight spot? Uh, you know, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I, I feel like I have kind of a well-balanced team. I, I you know, the, the 108 I had planned if, if Clyde edwards Alaire fell, I was going to take him. Um, and if not, George Kittle was the go-to who hasn't gone in the first round of any of these. But I think uh, he's my number one tight end, and uh, I wanted to kind of lock that up pretty early here. In the second round, you take Josh Jacobs. And I think I, – I can't remember if you were in the chat room. We were talking about this earlier, but uh, – or not tonight. It was a previous PBJ this year. Um, you had uh, Josh Jacobs in games where the Raiders were getting, you know, rocked or needed to come back. He was not on the field a lot. It was Jalen Richard. Um, but when the Raiders were winning, Jacobs never came off the field. How concerned are you this year with Jacobs potentially coming off the field on, on passing downs? Do you think that changes in, in year two? I think it changes. I, I think it's something that uh, we've already heard from the Raiders. They want to get Josh Jacobs more involved with the passing game. And I think that happens a lot year two with three down running backs is, a rookie year, you're worried about running the football. And now Josh Jacobs has that down. Now it's blocking and receiving. So I think we'll actually see him more. And I think the Raiders will be better. And uh, to me, that, that's kind of a, a lock solid uh, low end RB1. And I liked getting that um, in the second round. Yeah, he doesn't usually go. In, he usually goes a little bit closer to the turn, right? Paul? Yes, that is correct. Josh Jacobs uh, again over the last week normally goes at the two o three. Um, he has gone as high as the one eleven. So Shane, uh, were you? Um, uh, what, what was your reaction when you saw Fournette on the board uh, in your fourth in the fourth round? Uh, were you just kind of shocked? <laughs> yeah, I, it was. It was not my plan whatsoever. You guys were talking about Chris Carson falling. Uh, he was the guy I wanted there. And and then he obviously he was there, and then Fournette was there. So I kind of took all my time debating between the two of them. 
Um, obviously, I didn't have a chance to Carson on, on the next pick. But uh, I was like, man, I mean, Fournette, I, I don't like him, right? But that, that value, um, I think we know they're going to be a run first team. Uh, I think we know that he has to get, even though the Jaguars are going to be bad, he has to get more touchdowns. Um, and to get him that late as an RB2 just, just felt like I, I kind of had to do it. And sometimes those are the worst picks when you feel like you have to make them. But um, I'm hopeful that he can have a couple big weeks and, and help me out. So I, I, is it, was it a similar feeling when Raheem Mostert fell to you at the 507 tonight, or excuse me, 508 tonight? Because this is that's another guy that you got basically a full round of value on, man. Yeah, I, I you know I, I wanted to kind of pivot back to receiver there, um, but a couple guys that that I was eyeing up at that spot like Cortland Sutton, I think he went at the 412. Um, it just just kind of went, and so uh, I I really just feel like running back just takes a dive. And Mostert was a guy I had considered uh, before the draft and planning at the 405. I would have been happy with him there. Um, so I felt like I can get these three. I can kind of hold off on running back for five or six rounds and, and probably be good to go. Uh, you get Philip Lindsay here in the ninth. Um, and, and I'm just kind of curious to your thoughts on how you see that backfield breaking down between Gordon, Lindsay, and uh, Royce Freeman this year is is it is it the Gordon and Lindsay show and Freeman's just there in case of injury or in a perfect world how do you think Denver divides up those touches? I wouldn't even surprise me if Freeman gets cut to be honest with you. I I, I think he's barely hanging on to that roster. Um, I actually think Lindsay could be the RB one over Melvin Gordon, and that's kind of one of my bold takes here. Um, but I mean he's proven that he can catch the football. He's proven that he can produce. And I really, really like Denver this year. I think they're really going to take a step up. Um, so to have him as an RB4, I feel like he has big upside. Um, and it's perfect in this format, right? If he catches seven, eight passes, then he's plugged into my RB slot. If he has a week where uh, they're ahead and they're running Melvin Gordon and he doesn't get much, you know, I have enough running back space. To, so I kind of feel like Philip Lindsay is a great best ball running back. I know that that's kind of a trope that's out there, right? This guy's a great best ball player, but um, I think he is, is a guy I like as my RB4 that can give me a couple solid weeks and, and keep me atop the league. Yeah, I like the fact that he has a standalone value. He's not a player yeah. that requires an injury. He's not someone that, you know, like Antonio Gibson went before. Uh, you know, he needs, he needs a lot of things to kind of follow the right way. Lindsey doesn't really need that. He's just going to – he's already going to have a role in this offense. Shane Hallam joining us on the HSFF all right night. You follow him on Twitter at Shane P. Hallam. Shane, uh, in addition to uh, this, this juggernaut you're putting together here, you also have started a little mini tight end run here in the 10th round, taking Irv Smith there. We talked about maybe Irv Smith being the second uh, – uh, you know, the wide receiver two or the second pass catcher for Minnesota this year. Uh, is that a little bit hyperbolic, or could you see that happening? I, I think it could. I'm, I'm a bigger Smith guy. I felt like at the end of last season, he really came on and kind of passed Kyle Rudolph. Um, I, I, what I think is if Kyle Rudolph wasn't in Minnesota, what, what would be Irv Smith's ADP? I mean, he'd be going up with Noah Fant and TJ Hawkins, and he'd be going in that area. Uh, and I'm not sure Kyle Rudolph matters much anymore. I'm not sure if he's really much of a player. So if he kind of uh, fades and becomes that tight end two and Irv takes that tight end one, I mean, what he did as a 21-year-old – is outstanding, and usually we see that followed up pretty well. So, uh, I, once again, the kind of big upside player, George Kittle will hold down that spot for me, um, but I think Irv's kind of a high upside player that, I can, uh, that, that maybe can get some flex appeal with some big games. You have a fellow fan of Irv Smith in the Blog Talk Radio chat room tonight. Sports betting man Lance Turbis also loves Irv Smith this year. Shane, you're on the clock here in the 11th round. Take us through the thought process on who this selection will be. Well, there's actually a guy that I considered at the 908 that is still here, and I didn't really plan on taking my fifth receiver this early. But uh, I'll take Debo Samuel here in the, the, the end of the 11th round. I know the injury's there. He might miss a month. But we know the production's going to be there. It also kind of locks up the pass catchers in San Francisco to me, um, the, the guys that aren't rookies. So I have George Kittle. I have Debo. I think one of them will have a big game every time they have to throw the ball. And I have Mostert. So I guess I'm kind of hopping on the 49ers stack here. Uh, and when they have big games, I, it should put me ahead. But I think Debo's just too much value at the 11.08, even if he doesn't come back, you know, until October. Or if the regular season gets kicked back a couple weeks, 
then I kind of get him at an at absolute steal if he's going to be healthy. He is the Dynasty and Devi analyst for Fake Pigskin. Check out his NFL draft work at Draft Site. And he's the co-host of the Devi Marketplace podcast, too. Shane Hallam from Fake Pigskin joining us tonight. Shane, I have a few rookie drafts, actually, this week. I have the 101 in one of them. Who would you be taking at the 101 in a rookie draft, knowing what we know now? Hmm, tough. Huh. Here, here's what I would do is I would actually try to trade down to the 102. I, I, I would basically put that pick up. I think we've, I've seen trades where the 102 has given up a future first to move up one pick to take Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and I would take Jonathan Taylor. I think you can at least get a future second to move down one spot and still get an elite running back. I, I think Jonathan Taylor is better, um, and uh, I, I, that would kind of be my plan. Shane Hallam joining us tonight. Uh, good words, good advice, and I'm going to be sending out some trade offers after the broadcast tonight. Shane, best of luck to you the rest of the way in pros versus Joes and the FFPC main event. All your drafts this summer. Always good talking to you. Enjoy the rest of the draft tonight, man. No, thanks. And also, if you go to Fake Pigskin, my uh, pros versus Joes dynasty league, I, I wrote 11 pages of my unique strategy. I actually collected eight Holy 2021 God. firsts and two 2021 seconds. I think the most extreme strategy of any of those uh, uh, pros versus Joe's dynasty leagues. You can check that out. That's That's, awesome. That is good stuff. And we will check that out at fakepigskin.com. Truly good analysis, Shane. Be good, dude. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Shane Hallam, ladies and gentlemen, follow him on Twitter at Shane P. Hallam. Let's get back into the action here in the ninth round, Dave. James White leading things off the 901 to the Russells. Uh, followed by Henry Ruggs and Christian Kirk to Josh Hayes and Paul Dietzman, respectively. Dallas Goddard, the second tight end drafted by Evan Silva here at the 904 to back up Rod Um, Then a lot of running backs here. Antonio Gibson to Frank LaPrade. Tevin Coleman to John Paulson. Marlon Mack to Todd Pavlik. You heard uh, Shane Hallam talk about his Philip Lindsay pick. And then Tariq Cohen to Matt Groh. John U. Smith after that, followed by Matt Breida to the Suprinas. And then Matt Ryan, the first quarterback off the board to Peter Overzet. Overzet waited until round 10 to take his um, number two running back, which is Zach Moss. Drew Brees is going to be starting at quarterback for the Suprinas this year uh, as he is their selection at the 10-02. Tony Pollard to Jeremy Brown, followed by Tom Brady to Matt Groth uh, as his starting quarterback. You heard the Irv Smith pick, the, the Hallam's Hammers, and then Eric Ebron right after that to Todd Pavlik at the 10-06 tonight. That is his backup tight end to Hayden Hurst. Starting quarterback is Carson Wentz for John Paulson. A pair of tight ends, Chris Herndon to Frank LaPrade. That's his number two. Blake Jarwin to Evan Silva. That's his number three. Certainly doesn't want to get left out in the lurch at that position as he is the second team with three tight ends tonight. Jordan Howard to Paul Dietzman right after that. And then you have Jerry Judy to Josh Hayes in the two spot. Cam Newton wraps things up in the 10th round to Robert and Robbie Russell backing up Kyler Murray there. 11.01. Let's keep, keep things uh, sure. motoring along here, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Jack Doyle, number four tight end for the Russells. This is going to be such a fun team to talk about. Uh, Jack Doyle at the 11.01. Greg Olson is the starting tight end for Josh Hayes. I'm not sure if he saw that coming when he uh, was prepping for his main event, or his pros versus Joe's draft, but Greg Olson at the 11.02 tonight. McCole Hardman to Paul Dietzman. Carrion Johnson is going to Evan Silva here at the 11.04. Preston Williams is the number four receiver drafted by Frank LaPrade. Ian Thomas off the board to John Paulson as his backup to Travis Kelsey. At the 11.07, Justin Jefferson and then Debo Samuel made live on the air by Shane Hallam. Matthew Stafford is the second of two quarterbacks, back-to-back selections at the quarterback position for Matt Groth, you have Jalen Rager off the board as the number five receiver for Jeremy Brown. Kishon Vaughn to Chandler Saprina. And then Aaron Rodgers to Peter Overzet at the 11-12. He now has as many quarterbacks as he does running backs. Looking back on this draft, Dave, we have not talked about Ian Thomas a lot this year. He is taking the place of Greg Olson, who's moved on to what he hopes is bigger and better things in Seattle. That remains to be seen. But Ian Thomas, there's, there's going to be some opportunity for him in Carolina with Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, I think so. And he's a pretty talented player. Uh, you know, you're just kind of betting on the come, so to speak. And uh, but I, I think uh, he makes a lot of sense for, for Paulson here after having Kelsey, you know, a little bit of an upside young player, uh, just someone fine to have on his team. I feel like McCole Hardman's actually 
come back down to earth a little bit. Remember when people were just going crazy drafting him, talking about how great his upside is and all these big plays he can make. And, you know, you saw him sometimes in like the eighth round, sometimes the seventh round, Dave. The highest he's gone has been the eighth round over the last seven days. Tonight, he goes at, what was that, 11.03? His yep. ADP is 11.02. Yep. I feel like that's a better spot for him. That seems more in range. I, I actually feel like he should go a little bit later um, and after his teammate, but that's just, again, my take as we've talked about in the past. All right, so Ronald Jones in the seventh tonight, Keyshawn Vaughn in the 11th. Um, the prices on those guys after the LaShawn McCoy signing, I don't think has changed all that much. Uh, Jones, I guess, normally goes at the 508, uh, so maybe a little bit of a dip there. Well, that's quite a, quite a dip. Yeah, Vaughn is normally going at the 910, so good value for Keyshawn Vaughn there. This is kind of like what, I, what we talked about. Is I, I don't think McCoy has a huge impact on the team, and it's possible that he does. I could be totally wrong. Uh, so I feel like getting Rojo now in the seventh round, I feel like now you're kind of – that's kind of where I would like to be – like to pay for him and like to get him. I, I look at Kansas City last year, Dave. They didn't even have him active down the stretch of yeah, the Super Bowl run. Yeah, he was in the Super Bowl. He wasn't even active. Yeah, and and so now he goes to a, a Tampa team that again has Super Bowl aspirations. But you and I both like Ronald Jones. Um, I, I think at this point of their in life, Vaughn has more juice than than Shady McCoy. As weird as it is to say that, but I think that's, that's accurate. And that's where we're currently at on the Buccaneers running back situation. I'm with you. I don't, I don't think McCoy has a huge, has a huge impact uh, here in, in Tampa this year. Moving on to the 12th round, Dave, uh, Boston Scott, the third running back selected by Peter Overzet here at the 1201. Jay Sternberger, my guy at uh, 1202 to the Supremas here. Baker Mayfield backing up Josh Allen for Jeremy Brown. Alexander Madison, Matt Groth gets the handcuff there for his Dalvin Cook first round selection for cheap. Uh, for cheap, is he? Alexander Madison goes in the twelfth round, and I and I feel like Dave, and I'll get back to the analysis here in a second. But Madison has slipped now to the ten oh seven on average, which I still think is kind of cheap for him, and I think that's all because Dalvin Cook reported to training camp, mm-hmm. you know, and and a lot of the misgivings. You know, Henry Mudo, I think, was, was in the chat last Tuesday when Cook reported and said that, um, you know, all these – he was listening to all these hosts on Sirius XM saying that Cook was a, was a bad first-round investment. And to me, if you made that first-round investment, looking pretty good now because you probably got him a little bit later than he should have gone. Yeah, and we were the ones who were saying that he's going to report, it'll be fine, and that – Luckily, hopefully, the people who are listening to our podcast drafted Cook. Damian Harris after that uh, to Shane Hallam. A little shameless self-promotion there. I love it. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Ben Roethlisberger, instead of me all the time. Ben Roethlisberger is backing up Russell Wilson for Todd Pavlik, followed by Latavius Murray uh, to John Paulson there. Daryl Henderson to Frank LaPrade, and then Brandon Ayuk off the board at the 12.09 to Evan Silva. Sony Michelle to Paul Dietzman, and then uh, Daniel Jones to Josh Hayes after that. C.D. Lamb goes to Team Russell with the final pick of the 12th round. Dave, I'm going to present the 12th round without comment to you. I want you to start at the 1201, go all the way to the 1212. Maybe you don't even have to go all the way to the 1212. Maybe you could stop at the 1210. And tell me if there's anything that sticks out to you about a couple of running backs that were picked this round who may or may not be real-life teammates. Oh, yeah, so Damian Harris goes ahead of Sonny Michelle. Yeah, and this is how you would be picking him, too. You'd be taking Harris over Michelle, but I feel like... No, I would not. You would take Michelle over Harris? I, I think I would, yeah. I mean, he is technically the starter. Why, why would I take a guy who had, like, one carry last year over the starter? Because that guy's young and healthy, and the other guy is old and not healthy. Well, he's not old, but he's not healthy. So, yeah, what's, so what is his injury status right now? He's on, like, some sort of a pup list or something like that? I'll look it up right now. I, you know, I honest, the thing is, I, Sony Michelle is not really on my draft list, so I don't really keep much track of him. So uh, I think the right guy to own is James White in the ninth, so that was a nice pick at the 9 one right. All right, so Sony Michelle here, this is what we're going on. He is on the active pup list with a foot injury. He had foot surgery in May and had uh, 247 Man. carries last year, 3.7 yards per carry. Maybe, you know, maybe I wouldn't. I, you know, I, I don't normally draft Sony Michelle, so I really wasn't all that aware of what, you know, what his status was, so right. I apologize. That's okay. You don't um, have to apologize. People just want you to bring. I don't him know. That, I don't know if I would take Damian Harris ahead of him. That's, that's so tough to do. Okay. I mean, he technically is a starter, but I, I do have that cardinal rule not to draft players that are injured coming into training camp. 
And surgery? Why did he wait until May to have surgery on his? I don't know. That's so crazy, right? You know, some. Oh, this is more of a baseball thing. But a lot of times, um, and, and again, I don't want to compare the injuries because they're totally different. But a lot of these guys who get these strained ligaments or partially torn ligaments in their elbow, a lot of these pitchers, they try to rehab it first and avoid the the, the Tommy John surgery. And then they come back, they pitch like crap, and they end up having the surgery anyway. Right. So maybe that. that's what happened with Michelle, is he thought he could rehab this foot injury, and then it just got to be a point where, like, I can't do this. I'm going to have to have this surgically repaired, and then that's why he had it. I don't know. I, I'm, just, so I'm mean, just speculating. Yeah, it's totally possible. I, what, should really, I should be more informed on Sony Michelle if I were that interested. So, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. Now, we should get two Packer on, because that guy should be the expert on Sony yeah. Michelle. No after, matter what. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, Damian Harris had such a disappointing rookie season that it's just tough for me to get behind drafting him. But it does make sense. He was talented coming out of school. Uh, and I was surprised that he was used so infrequently. Uh, let's go to the 727, ladies and gentlemen, right now and take another phone call here on the HSFF. Our coverage of Pros versus Joe is 2020. 727, you're on the air with Dave and Balky. Who are we talking to? This is Robbie Russell. Oh, good. Robbie Russell. If there's one guy I could talk to in this draft, it would be Robbie Russell tonight. All right. So let's so much to talk about here. Kick things off. I'm what sure. went through your mind at, at, at the 101 tonight? When, when you could add anybody, you went with Edward Delaire. Talk a little bit about that decision. Uh, I just like how Andy Reid compared him to Brian Westbrook. Um, I, I did a draft, uh, I want to say like mid-July. And uh, took CEH number one overall there in a uh, Terminator League, I believe it was. And uh, with the news of, you know, Damian Williams opting opting out, it just, I don't know, it was a no-brainer to me. I don't see CMC doing what he did the last couple of years, especially with new coaches and stuff like that. Robbie, what t- I, I, I want to talk with you, with you about your tight end selection here at the 212 tonight, too, because we historically have seen uh, this year Mark Andrews go ahead of Zach Ertz. You could add either one. Why was Ertz the pick over Andrews there? Uh, I, to be honest, I was looking, I was looking at going Ertz and, Ertz and Andrews, um, you know, with, with Andrews coming out with type 1 diabetes, and I know he said he's going to play. Um, I, it, it was a toss-up there, honestly. Uh, my plan was to get Goddard as a backup, but that went awry. Um, but, I mean, Ertz Ur- is Wentz's guy still. So I, I, I just feel like I don't see Andrews getting 10 touchdowns again. I think uh, Baltimore is going to get some uh, better production this year from their wide receiver core. Talking about continuing this tight end conversation with you, uh, Robbie, um, you had two tight ends after five rounds, three after eight, and four after 11. Are you, you know, given that you're on the end here, were you just trying to kind of force the issue for some of these other teams that, that you know, like Josh Hayes right next to you who hadn't had a tight end? Uh, at the time, you had four, he had zero, then he takes Greg Olson. What was the strategy for loading up with tight ends in the first 11 rounds? Uh, the way I look at it is, again, you know, you got two flex spots, right? And you can use the tight end. Uh, it's it's so hard to pass up that point and a half compared to one for a running back or a wide receiver. And you know I got Evans and Sutton early on, so I, I felt like at that point I was I was set at wide receiver. You know. Did you have any interest after you got DeAndre Swift late in the sixth round? Did you have any interest in in pairing him up with Carryon Johnson, or were you just uh, good with Swift after that? I was good with Swift. Um, I've never been a carry on Johnson fan, uh, you know, going back to, uh, I want to say like his high school days, if I'm not mistaken, he's just always seems to be hurt or, or missing some chunk of the season. And I think the lions saw that and that's why they went out and grabbed Swift. And I, even if carry on stays healthy, which I, which I highly doubt, but I still see Swift slowly eating into his time and maybe by week seven, eight or so, he's most likely going to be the starter. You have to be weak somewhere in these drafts. It's just nobody can build a dominant team at every position. Obviously, you, you have some playmakers at running back. You, you have a, a large volume at tight end here. Murray and Newton are your quarterbacks. The receivers, are. is it a stretch to say, Robbie, that you're going to be hammering that position in the last five rounds of this draft? Most likely. Um, I'm, I'm looking – uh, scouting right now to see who's there for that. Um, you know, again, I, I, I like the, the top two that I got. And then, you know, with CD lamb there um, and all the bye weeks work out, but uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily say hammer, 
uh, but I will definitely be looking for at least two more. Robbie, final question on this Clyde Edwards Alaire thing. Um, actually, this is more of a Christian McCaffrey question. Um, if let, let's say you're in a draft and, and let's say um, you have the two pick and Edwards Hilaire goes off the board at one, um, would you be taking McCaffrey at two or, or are you letting him slip there too? No, I would take McCaffrey at two. Um, I, coming into this draft, you know, before Williams opted out, I, I was already – toss you know tossing between McCaffrey and and Hilaire um I mean I just obviously I'm I'm putting all my eggs in Hilaire's basket there but if he can pan out like I said I I think the production there is going to be real close but I I mean it's it's one two for me so yeah McCaffrey at number two all day all right so last question here uh you're on the clock here in the 14th 15th turn who are you looking at um definitely looking at uh, one of those wide receivers uh, that we talked about. A um, couple of options here for sure. Uh, let me check. Yep. I, 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 Anthony Miller, third-year wide receiver, can't go wrong. You know, yes. that's typically when wide receivers like to like to break out. Um, I'm hoping Nick Foles <laughs> wins the job there. I'm not a Trubisky fan at all, um, and, and I like the addition of Foles, that quarterback there. I like it, um, and and uh, so the fourteenth at the fourteen twelve, you take Anthony Miller, who uh, who I'm a fan of, and, and to get him as your number four receiver, given uh, the, um, the the team construction you already have at running back and tight end, I think is a big win for you. Leading off the fifteenth round, who's it going to be? Um, I I feel like I can go anywhere. Like I think you all said that earlier. Like you know, we're a wild card. You really don't know where we're going to go. Um, right. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Armstead. I mean, Fournette, you know, again, he's kind of like a, like a Dalvin cook in a way, you know, or a carry on Johnson. He he always seems to miss chunks of season uh, last year. I think he played all season though. And I, and there was a couple of teams I had Armstead just waiting in the wings for Fournette to miss games and he didn't. Um, so hoping, hoping that pans out this year. When Clyde Edwards-Alaire is the fantasy running back one in 2020, you can tweet your congratulations to Robbie Russell at <laughs> Robbie one underscore Russell. Uh, thank you so much, Robbie, for, for joining the broadcast tonight. Thanks for making this a very enjoyable draft to cover. Best of luck in PBJ and the main event this year, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think I got number one in the main event, so stay tuned. We'll see who I go with there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Thanks, right. Robbie. <laughs> Have a good All night, right. man. Thanks, guys. This is going to be a yeah, good... – thank you. That, this is going to be a fun main event, Dave, uh, Edwards. I love you know, it. And, and, you know, the scuttlebutt on Twitter after the, the FFPC main event early draft slots came out was, you know, we're talking about Edwards Hilaire, and they are the opening game this year. And we already saw what happened to Kareem Hunt after that opening game on Thursday night where he went after that. He right. was the first overall pick in many an FFPC main event. Edwards Hilaire blows up there, knowing what we know about that offense, knowing where they're being taken right now. If you see Edwards Hilaire going in a lot of drafts at the 101 tonight, that was Robbie Russell, uh, at Robbie one underscore Russell on Twitter. Getting back to the action in the 13th round, the aforementioned Russell takes Chase Edmond to lead things off, followed by Kirk Cousins, number three quarterback drafted by Josh Hayes there. Mike Williams to Paul Dietzman, followed by Duke Johnson to Evan Silva at the 1304. Paris Campbell off the board to Frank LaPrade. Josh Kelly to John Paulson right after that. Sammy Watkins, who I think is officially um, on my radar for the first time in his career, Dave, this year. I, I like Sammy Watkins. I like the pick there for Todd Pavlik at the 1307. Jared Goff is the first quarterback chosen by Shane Hallam. He gets Goff at the 1308. John Brown to Matt Groth. Dawson Knox to Jeremy Brown. And then you have Joe Burrow and A.J. Dillon. A pair of rookies wrapping up the 13th round here. Burrow to the Supremas and A.J. Dillon to Peter Overzet. Uh, DeAndre Washington also, uh, as we get into the 14th round, Dave, uh, this is the third straight running back drafted by Peter Overzet. Certainly some upside there on the Kansas City Chiefs. Naheem Hines, the pass catcher for Indianapolis, to Chandler and Dalton Saprina. Anthony McFarlane, one of the backup running backs for Pittsburgh to Jeremy Brown. Jeremy Brown, who uh, works for Dynasty Football Factory, maybe has some insight on who that backup to James Conner will be this year. He's putting his money on Anthony McFarland. Deshaun Jackson after that to Matt Groth, Drew Locke, 
is Shane Helms back to back the second half of his back to back quarterback picks there as he pairs Locke with Goff. Chris Thompson, pass catching running back uh, to uh, from Jacksonville to Todd Pavlik, followed by Ryan Tannehill, the number two quarterback drafted by John Paulson from four for four. The uh, Frank LaPrade franchise in the five spot now has three tight ends, Gerald Everett joining Jared Cook and Chris Herndon there as he goes off the board in the 14th. Curtis Samuel and Jimmy Garoppolo to Silva and Dietzman respectively, followed by Kyle Rudolph, and you heard the Anthony Miller pick live on the air to Robbie Russell at the 14-12 tonight. And that is your 14th round as we are getting in uh, to um, uh, round 15 here. In fact, I think I might want to adjust the YouTube channel just so we can get that full draft board on that everybody really, really likes, Dave. Uh, I, far be it for me to, to um, uh, rob the, the viewers of who the actual picks are going to be yeah. here. The I want to view. Yeah, I know, and I'm trying to adjust it right now. This is, listen, this is – okay, so I know Rob, our, our producer, works very hard, but this is why we need him to – like you know take more of it he takes too many smoke breaks well that's the thing and and he always plans it around when this stuff needs adjusting all right i think i got it now i apologize for that all right thanks rob 14th round what stands out to you here um a lot of players that we have talked about before dave when you look at the pittsburgh running back situation this is where we'll kick things off here anthony mcfarland is he the backup for you at um at running back for james connor or do you like somebody else? Or I guess maybe this is the most important question. Um, is there fantasy value in the backup Pittsburgh running back uh, situation this year? Oh, uh, yeah, it's possible. Uh, McFarland could be the guy. Jalen Samuels just got put on the reserve COVID list just uh, seven hours ago. Actually. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's possible. It's him. You know, I'd, I prefer myself. You know, I haven't drafted McFarland myself at all, and I, I prefer not to not to draft a a reserve player that it could be one of two or three others. So, you know, I, pr- I probably would have gone maybe a different direction there. That, that's how my feeling on it. Cause I'm just, and, and you know, okay. So let's, let's say for the, the sake of argument, you, you feel like it's going to be Benny Snell. How much fantasy upside is there in that? I mean, I know it's late and, and if he is catching or, and if he is, you know, getting all the targets there, okay, I, I can kind of get it. But at the same time, I'm not very excited about that at all. Uh, moving on here into what else did I want? Now let's move into the 15th round here, Dave. Reichwell Armstead off the board at 1501. You heard that pick from Robbie Russell live on these airwaves. Denzel Mims off the board after that to Josh Hayes. Teddy Bridgewater is the third player selected in the 15th round here by um, uh, Paul Dietzman. And then you have uh, Golden Tate right after him to Evan Silva. Phillip Rivers is the second quarterback drafted by Frank LaPrade. Then you have Alan Lazard and LaShawn McCoy, the aforementioned LaShawn McCoy, going off the board uh, tonight at the uh, seven, uh, seven spot. That's Todd Pavlik. He did not have Ronald Jones. He did not have Kishon Vaughn, but he does get a piece of that Buccaneers backfield here. Uh, Steven Sims off the board after that. Every time I, I see Steven Sn- Sims' name, I think that was Kramer from Seinfeld's name when he was on Murphy Brown. He was uh, the secretary for Murphy Brown. But I, I had to look this up. It's Steven Snell was his name, <laughs> not Steven Sims. But I always think of that episode. It's really funny that you even remember that. Um, yeah, it just sticks in my mind for whatever reason. Gardner Minshew, uh, who just got placed on the COVID list. I saw somebody on Twitter say, if you were taking bets on what NFL player is most likely to make it to the COVID list, yeah. uh, would Gardner Minshew not be the odds on favorite? Be pretty, uh, Maybe pretty Beckham. I could see Beckham on there uh, as well, but Mayfield, yeah, I can see Mayfield. Mayfield. Yeah, yeah. One. People who don't young people make dumb decisions. Right. Yeah. Uh, then you have Will Disley and Darrington Evans wrapping up things in the 15th round. Will Disley, the third tight end drafted by the Supremas. And then uh, Darrington Evans, four straight running backs here now four overs at, and, and we'll get into what we think about that uh, coming up uh, a little bit later on. Um, did you – okay, no, we talked about him already. I don't want to talk uh, about Alan Lazard. Let's talk about Denzel Mims because uh, this is a player I know I liked in the pre-draft process, maybe even more than you, um, but he goes to a situation where he's got Prashad Perriman there and not much other competition. And right. I understand he's a rookie, but I also understand that the Jets, you know, they just lost – one of their linebackers for the season who's opting out. I don't know how good that defense is going to be. They could be throwing it a lot. And when you talk about throwing the ball around the field, you want to throw it to your most talented player. To me, Dave, that is Denzel Mims, rookie or not. I like this pick as a guy who could end up being their number one receiver going off in the 15th round. 
Yeah, you know, he's got a shot. I think that, uh, you know, one of the reasons I don't like him is because I tried to get him in Dynasty Leagues and I couldn't get him anywhere, so now I hate him. So that's, that's yeah, good. I didn't get him anywhere either, I although I do have three rookie drafts this week, so I'm very, very oh, to go. get him that's in right. um, Yeah, so I, I, I actually wanted to acquire him in at least one of the eight leagues I'm in in Dynasty, and I could not get him. I mean, I could have, but it you know, just didn't work out for whatever reason. Well, uh, but I do like him. I think that you know, even though he's a rookie, he's got a shot. Like, you know, all those points you, you mentioned are good, and he's not super expensive. He's re- relatively reasonable. You know, same team took Jerry Judy at the, in the late 10th. Uh, you know, I think that Mims, while he's not – on the, quite on the same level as Judy. I mean, that many rounds later, that's definitely worth a shot. I think what I'm going to do, getting back to my dynasty rookie drafts, um, there's live drafts, and I, what what we've done in the past is I just set my queue, and then it's just auto because I'm broadcasting these drafts. I can't. You we know, should do yours on the air. No, we're not going to do it on the air, but I will recap because um, I I I will set it, and then I will close the draft room, do the show, and then after the show is over. Like before we sign off, I'll go in there and tell you exactly who I got because it's like opening presents on Christmas Day. I know you do. I know you say that, but why don't you just do the drafts? I mean, because these are live. How, how long do you have? Like a minute and a half or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's. I think I think it is still a minute and a half. Yeah, I mean, leave it open and then just like you know, you know, throw it to me or something, and then make your pick. You know, <laughs> I mean, I could. I I don't, I don't know how comfortable I am doing that, but Can you. I mean, how big of a chat? I mean, I don't know. It depends on how big of a. You know, if you could fit them on the computer screen. Yeah, I, I don't know. Could be on your phone. I will. Could cons- do it on your phone. I I could do it on my phone. I will consider that. Um, I'm not going I to say. I, I can talk. For I know you can. I can I, talk I, for like yes, thirty. Seconds. I understand that you're very talented at talking. I'm not saying I'm talented. Seconds. I'm saying I can. You can do it. Yeah. All right. So let's. Um, um, yeah. Here we go into the seventeenth round. Oh, I'm around early. Um. Uh. uh anyway, I'm, Eric, what do you think of this? I like. Guy? I don't know. I'm still making my pick. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> And Akil Harry is an interesting pick here in the 16th round by Overzet. I, I got to decide if I want, you know, <laughs> Darrington Evans or frickin' uh, Ty, Tyler, uh, whoever the guy is from Minnesota that got Tampa drafted. <laughs> is his name Tyler Anderson? Why can't Tyler Hamilton? Who no, that's the biker. I, 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 I'll figure it out later. Reggie Hammond? Reggie Hammond, yeah. That was from, like uh, 48, 48 hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take uh, – um, um, Logan Malone from uh, Blue Streak, and just yeah. and just get get all the. Well, you make it happen, Malone. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you've never seen Blue Streak, see that movie. It is tremendous. Oh, it's great. Moving on to the 16th round, Nikhil Harry to Peter Overzet to lead things off as he goes back to the wide receiver. Well, Sam Darnold uh, to the Supremas is their number three quarterback. Jalen Hurd at the 16-10 uh, tonight to Jeremy Brown. O.J. Howard is the third tight end drafted by Matt Groth uh, as he goes with him to go with Kisicki and Mark Andrews. Tua Tunga Bailoa is the third quarterback drafted by Shane Hallam. Then you have Benny Snell going off the board uh, right after that to Todd Pavlik. Michael Pittman, the rookie quarter uh, receiver excuse me, for Indianapolis uh, to John Paulson. And then you have Robbie Anderson to Frank LaPrade followed by Derek Carr being selected by Evan Silva. Tyler Eifert to Paul Dietzman, Rex Burkhead, to Josh Hayes, and then Devin Asiasi, back-to-back Patriots here, to Robbie Russell here with the final pick of the 16th round. David, you look at Rex Burkhead. As long as we've turned this into the Patriots running back show, what about Rex Burkhead this year in the 16th round? Yeah, you know, he actually gets more interesting and a little more valuable, given that Sonny Michel might be uh, you know, on the men still or on the you know, he. Sonny Michelle, I mean, there's a non-zero chance he could get pumped, just given the kind of news that I learned tonight. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, Jalen Hurd, this is a guy that you liked in the pre-draft process a couple years ago. Yep. Uh, the Baylor transfer that was at Tennessee, right? Or am I flip-flopping those? He was at Tennessee, and then yeah. he went to Baylor? He was a running back at Tennessee, five-star recruited right. running back. And then uh, he, because he wanted to have a longer NFL career, he transferred to Baylor and, and became a wide receiver. And now he's a wide receiver for the Niners. Got shelved early on to IR this year. Uh, are people letting him slip? Are, are people penalizing him in drafts too far because of that? I don't, I don't know that they are. I mean, because then they took Brandon Ayak, the, the Niners did. And Hurd was always supposed to be one of those Swiss Army knife type weapons, which is generally irritating and not useful enough for fantasy. So even though it is best ball, it's like, oh, Jalen Hurd, uh, you know, three rushes for 12 yards and, you know, one catch for six yards. That's not so impressive. And then he's, you know, punt return or something like that. But having said all that, I mean, he is, I mean, he's like 6'5", 225. He's a big dude. And he can catch. He's talented. He was a former five-star recruit. When you're in the 16th round and, and you have a Debo injured 
an Ayaka rookie, I, I think that I don't think it's a bad pick at all. Actually, I, I prefer I'm, I actually much prefer the Nikhil Harry pick, but uh, I think Hurd's okay. Um, one of the things that Matt Waldman has said on the Football Guys um, Audible podcast before, when you talk about gadget players, you know what happens to gadgets in, in your own house? They often fall between the couch cushions, and then you can never use them again because you can't find them. And <laughs> and that's it. He so I think that's pretty. Kinda, that's pretty good. He kind of has this uh, distaste in his mouth when a, a coach calls somebody a gadget player because, uh, the, you, as you stated, Dave, oftentimes it won't work out well. For uh, fantasy purposes, yeah, you want to have a defined role for your players. I mean, at least you don't have to pick and choose when to start. You know, start them in this format. But yeah. I mean, good gracious. Uh, Chase Claypool kicks off the penultimate round here tonight from PVJ number four. This is the Fat Boy Slim uh, Division uh, League, excuse me, that you're listening to on the HSFF. Or yeah, Chase Division? Cla- are we going to talk? No, about- no, no, no. Come on. <laughs> I corrected myself. I didn't need any prodding. Chase Claypool. Uh, to, and by the way, that was a rip on the KFFSC, not the state of Kentucky, for any of our yes. players who live in Kentucky. They have divisions. They don't have leagues. Right, yes. Chase Claypool uh, at the 1701 tonight. Jimmy Graham right after that, the 1702 pick to Josh Hayes. Corey Davis off the board uh, to Paul Dietzman at the 1703. Pair of running backs here, Dave. Devontae Freeman to Evan Silva. Justin Jackson off the board to Frank LaPrade after that. And then you get a couple of wide receivers. So this is the unemployment round, I think. You have Antonio Brown <laughs> going off the board to uh, uh, Todd Pavlik. Was that Todd Pavlik who took him? No. That was uh, John Paulson. Took John Paulson. Todd Pavlik took uh, D.D. Westbrook. Trey Burton off the board to Shane Hallam, followed by Hunter Renfro, the Las Vegas slot receiver, ka uh, off the board after Trey Burton. And then you have Tyrod Taylor, the number three quarterback, Drafted by Jeremy Brown. LaVisca Chenault uh, is the uh, second-to-last player selected in the 17th round by Chandler and Dalton Saprina. Peter Overzet uh, continues going back, taking water out of that wide receiver well. Still not drained. It is James Washington as the final pick of the 17th round. This was the player that I wanted to talk to you about earlier, Dave, and I guess we can lump both of these guys into this conversation now that we had two Jaguars receivers off the board uh, in this round. You talked about how you like DJ Chark earlier. Yes. Um, and I'm curious as to thinking or get your thinking in a best ball format where you're trying to get pockets of goodness and locking these, these, these players up. Would you be looking to pair DJ Chark with either of these 17th round receivers in Westbrook or Chanel? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, out of those, you know, the four receivers selected there, I like Renfro the best. And I would, so if I own Chark, and they were all there. I would still take Renfro over Westbrook and Chenault and not try and get cute. But then I would take I would take Westbrook over Chenault myself. I, I just feel like you know he's got the, he's a veteran presence and he has a better shot of outproducing Chenault. I guess my point is here on this: if you do get Chark early, and and I don't want to put words in your mouth, you're not necessarily looking to get Westbrook or Chenault later to pair with them. That's correct. I okay. don't really I don't really personally care that much. I don't think either one of them is all that outstanding is there i don't think there's that huge of a bonus necessarily to doing it did you get chenault in any of your rookie dress oh at least one maybe two um Devontae freeman does not have a job antonio brown does not have a job and at least freeman doesn't have a suspension looming right did you see it was uh eight, eight games? games yeah yeah, eight, yeah. Uh, i shouldn't say looming it was, it was assessed yeah, it was assessed yeah um he is pending. It's the, assessed and pending. It's not looming. Serving the suspension is looming. Dave. <laughs> there you go. Or I guess he's serving it right now, technically. Um, okay, so here's what I wanted to bring up here with, with these two players. I, I am much more likely to take a chance on Devontae Freeman than I am on Antonio Brown, even given that Freeman has the limited ceiling. Uh, I am not an Antonio Brown guy in 2020. Freeman I could kind of see, although I probably would have looked elsewhere. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean um... – you know, I'll, yeah, Antonio Brown for eight games is that? I mean, cause I, I do think he's going to get signed and picked up somewhere, but then he's such a you know, such a flake. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I'm looking at. I think I would if again I would have taken Renfro over Antonio Brown. He went after him. I would have taken honestly. I like the Josh Reynolds pick, which we didn't talk about yet, but I like I like that pick also um, by the same owner over Antonio Brown. So there you go. No, no, no. I don't. Not I'm not. I'm trying to look for the Reynolds pick. Oh, you won the 18th. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. I was. I, I was looking at the wrong end of the board. Um, yeah. That nice yet now. Same, same owner. With without further ado, let's get to the 18th. Round. Sorry, I ruined it. This is it. That's it. okay. They, don't worry about the it. Ruiner you, of drafts. You only ticked off uh, a couple of players. All right. So Cole Komet uh, to uh, 180 is the uh, 1801 pick for Peter Overzet. T Higgins after that 
uh, to the Suprinas. Dan Arnold to Jeremy Brown. Josh Reynolds, as Dave just mentioned. Uh, Josh Reynolds goes off the board to Matt Groth. A uh, trio of running backs. It is Jarek McKinnon to Shane Hallam. It is Gus Edwards to Todd Pavlik. It is Carlos Hyde to John Paulson. Mm, love that pick. Yeah, no Miles Boykin right after that to Frank Leprad. Darwin Thompson, Chiefs running back, making uh, an, another Chiefs running back, excuse me, making an appearance uh, by uh, Evan Silva here. And then uh, three receivers to end it. J.J. Ortega, Whiteside goes off the board to Paul Dietzman, followed by Tyrell Williams, another good pick here in the 18th. And then Quintez Cephas, the rookie receiver from Wisconsin, going to Robbie Russell to end things up here, Dave. And pros versus Joe's number four is in the books. I was just thinking that you know, the Carlos Hyde pick was nice. That would have been a nice pick for Overzet in the 12th instead of Kyle, Cole Komet, which to me is he's a kind of a little bit on the useless tip. I know you want to get three tight ends, but uh, – with Henry and Hawkinson, you could have just rolled with them and thrown Hyde into your uh, zero RB mix. I'm with you on that. I, I think Hyde would have made more sense. Quite frankly, you have some standalone value. I think Jarek McKinnon could have made more sense there than Cole. But basically, anybody but Cole Komet. I do. He's a he's a tight end. He's a rookie tight end, and I never really liked him all that much in the pre-draft process right. either. So. Yeah, he's, and he he's a one-year semi wonder at Notre Dame. What That's true. That's another good point. yards and three, four touchdowns or something like that. I don't, again, I don't even know the stats, but they were not impressive. Yeah. They were not bueno as, uh, as the kids say. All right. So let's, um, let's talk about this, Dave. Um, <laughs> I'm just getting my team by team process lined up here and I'm trying to fit it all to the oh, Cole come at 43 catches for 515 yards and six touchdowns. And as a senior, and that was his only like solid year. Okay. So we were pretty close. Cool. Fair enough. All right. So let's get into team analysis, kick things off with Robbie Russell here. Quarterbacks are Kyler Murray and Cam Newton running backs, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, uh, Deandre Swift, James White, Chase Edmonds, Ryquel Armstead receivers, Mike Evans, Cortland Sutton, CD lamb, Anthony Miller, uh, Chase Claypool, and Quintez Cephas. And then you have tight ends being Zach Ertz, Evan Engram, Noah Fant, Jack Doyle, and Devin Asiasi. Dave, to me, a little bit of overkill on the tight ends cost some uh, needed depth at running back and at wide receiver here. It's got a lot of rookies and young players that if they break out or you know are, are not bust, certainly this team could be one to, to be tangled with. Um, I just, uh, I, the, the, the difficult part for me on this, and, and I know Robbie explained this when he called in, I still am Team McCaffrey at the 101. Just can't get behind CEH there, and that's why it's preventing me from giving a glowing recommendation of this of this team here. Yeah, I mean the receiver depth is just not up to, up to snuff. And then by taking Edwards Hilaire, there's and and then you know Swift is your number two. There's just so much uncertainty at running back. Uh, I'm going to be looking elsewhere for a, a favorite team in this uh, in this league. Josh Hayes from Roto Baller, Patrick Mahomes, Daniel Jones, Kirk Cousins at quarterback. Running backs: Christian McCaffrey, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Darius Geis, and Rex Burkhead. Uh, wide receivers: DK Metcalf, Brandon Cooks, Brashad Perriman, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Denzel Mims, and Tyrell Williams. Tight ends: Greg Olson, Kyle Rudolph, and Jimmy Graham. Dave, I, I, I don't with Patrick Mahomes. I would not have taken a third quarterback. Running back uh, core is really, really good here. Uh, wide receivers, I think Lance Turvis is pointing this out in the chat room. There's a lot of speed among these receivers that he's got in his team. Good depth there. Um, too much uh, of this building the depth at these positions was at the cost of his tight ends. He waited until round 11 to take his first one. Olsen, Rudolph, and Graham not passing the eye test for me. Yeah, he really got penalized in round 10 when that, you know, that second-tier tight end run hit because he had been taking you know, Perriman, Ruggs, Judy, and I don't know. If, I don't know, I'm not saying it caught him by surprise, but I think he really should have addressed the position earlier, and it did. It did kind of hurt him. Man, getting Le'Veon Bell in the fifth round is so outstanding. McCaffrey, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell with Mahomes, the receivers turned out great. If he can get any type of production out of Olsen or, or Rudolph, he might have. A, he might have a shot. Uh, I don't know that I can count on it though. He's probably going to need some production out of those three rookie receivers too. Like one of those probably has to hit. Uh, in order for him to have a dominant team here. Paul Dietzman here at the uh, third spot, Dave. Deshaun Watson, Jimmy Garoppolo, Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. Running back, Saquon Barkley, Todd Gurley, Chris Carson, J.K. Dobbins, Jordan Howard, Sony Michelle at running back. Receivers are DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, McCole Hardman, Mike Williams, Corey Davis, J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, and then Darren Waller, Antonio, or excuse me, Austin Hooper, and Tyler Eifert. I, I I think the quarterback and running backs are, are really good. I think the tight ends are really good too. Is he going to get enough spike weeks from receiver, uh, the receiver position? My guess is no, but who knows? Well, I mean, 
his, you know, okay. So he's got, first of all, he has Watson who's really great. Uh, Waller and Hooper, uh, you know, Eifert, whatever. So Waller and Hooper are also great. His running backs are like outstanding. Barkley, Gurley, Carson, Dobbins, Howard, and even throw, I mean, we were dogging Sonny Michelle, though, but he was a sixth running back. So he's clearly looking at starting Hopkins, Kirk, and then getting a little bit of production out of, you know, the Hardman, Mike Williams, and so forth. I like this team a lot. I mean, his running backs are so outstanding. It's just, it's tough to, I mean, Jordan Howard is the starting running back for the Dolphins. So he's got five starting backs on oh, his Sonny Michelle for the Patriots. Four, four and a half, I mean, yeah, five and a half, whatever it is. I think Dietzman acquitted himself very well here. Even, you know, you know, I know I, I don't love, love, love Hopkins, but I mean, it's still DeAndre freaking Hopkins. So when you have that as your anchor wide receiver, I think you're in pretty good shape. I like his team quite a bit. Uh, Evan Silva from Establish the Run has Dak Prescott and Derek Carr, quarterback. Running backs, Ezekiel Elliott, Aaron Jones, uh, on Johnson, Duke Johnson, Devontae Freeman, and Darwin Thompson. Uh, receivers, Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, Will Fuller, Jameson Crowder, Brandon Ayak, Curtis Samuel, Golden Tate, Tight ends, Rob Gronkowski, Dallas Goddard, and Blake Jarwin. This is a good, balanced team here by, by that Evan Silva drafted. Um, you know, what's funny is, is the receivers on the surface, and he drafted a, a couple that, that I usually stay away from. Uh, but, I mean, if they work out, I, I think his, uh, his quarterbacks and tight ends are going to be good. Um, and then he just needs, he needs some production from on Johnson as he waited to take him as his number three running back until round 11. Duke Johnson's pass catching chops will help. Devontae Freeman, if he gets signs, will, will help. I just don't know how much. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I like Evan's team a bit. You know, his tight ends worked out well for him. Uh, Dak Prescott was a good pick, too. I mean, overall, his team, like you said, it's well-balanced. I thought I got value, too, with Carrion and Duke Johnson. So I, th- I like his team overall quite a bit. It's good. Nice, nice job. Frank LaPrade, Lamar Jackson, and Phillip Rivers are his signal callers. Alvin Kamara, David Montgomery, Ronald Jones, Antonio Gibson, Daryl Henderson, Justin Jackson at running back. Receivers, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, Michael Gallup, Preston Williams, Paris Campbell, Robbie Anderson, Miles Boykin. Tight ends are Jared Cook, Chris Herndon, and Gerald Everett. I like what he did at tight end, despite waiting until round eight to, to grab one. I, I think the three that he got are solid. Uh, quarterbacks, obviously, uh, more than good. I like the, the top four receivers for sure. Uh, and, and then he's, he's got some potential with the receivers after that. Um, but, but the question for me on this team is, is the running back position. Kamara is obviously going to be great. But then you look at Montgomery, potential uh, timeshare, Ronald Jones, potential timeshare, Antonio Gibson, I don't know what's going on uh, with Washington. And then Daryl Henderson is obviously going to need some help uh, with a Cam Akers injury to be relevant. So for me, the question is running backs. But again, Dave, I think this is a pretty good, pretty well-balanced team. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, running backs, Kamara, Montgomery, Ronald Jones, and then receivers, Julio, Beckham, Gallup. So those are your top six, right? That's pretty good. I mean, but the thing is, the thing that's easy for us to forget is that he still has Lamar Jackson. He got in the third round. So when you have a guy that gets a, he gets a quarterback and then he gets like, a, like three quarters of a running back on top of it when you're only starting 10 positions, that's pretty good. I mean, really, he kind of snuck – it's almost like he snuck Lamar Jackson in there and still ended up with a pretty good team without Lamar Jackson, like if he had a regular quarterback. Uh, I like the way it worked out for him. Uh, Preston Williams is a nice pick. Uh, I, yeah, I like his team overall quite a bit as well. I thought even Miles Boykin in the 18th round, you know, second-round player or second-year player who's got a shot to do something. Um, John Paulson from 4for4.com is next. Carson Wentz and Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. Austin Eckler, James Conner. Uh, Tevin Coleman, Latavius Murray, Josh Kelly, and Carlos Hyde at running back. Uh, receivers, Robert Woods, Tyler Lockett, Devontae Parker, A.J. Green, Marvin Jones, Alan Lazard, Michael Pittman, and Antonio Brown. The tight ends are Travis Kelsey and Ian Thomas. Dave, I, I felt he went a little overboard at wide receiver, but it didn't really cost him anywhere. You know, when you take Kelsey early, I, I would only take one tight end after that. I think Wentz and Tannehill, I mean, there, there's some concern there, but at least he got two quarterbacks. Uh, and the, the running backs here, you need some production from Tevin Coleman. But if Kamara goes down, you have Murray. If Akers goes down, you have Kelly. Uh, and if Carson goes down, you have Hyde. So there's certainly some upside with those running backs late. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, part of the thing with me with his his team is the, is the receivers. The top four are guys that are kind of on my list. That I, I generally not that I, not that I don't ever take them, but I don't really ever take them. So I don't know for whatever reason I, I don't. Have, <laughs> yeah, I get not it. that I would never take them. I just don't ever take them. So I, I don't. I, I I would never take these guys except for when I actually do sometimes. For, yeah, when I'm forced to. Right. Uh, Woods, Lockett, Parker, AJ Green, pass, 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 pass. So you know it's hard. John might have a, an awesome team. 
and if he does, that means that my rankings are mostly wrong this year. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's cool. It's, it's all good. I mean, I, I think his construction was fine, though. I mean, taking his tight end early and then waiting and getting once and then that spot was a really nice, nice job then for him. For what it's worth, four for four has had some of the best, uh, most accurate redraft rankings over the years. There you go. So uh, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, maybe maybe they're really good at running back, but not at receiver. We'll find out. All right, moving on here. Todd You're Pavlik. totally wrong. Well, I mean, it, anybody could be at this point. We, we're just all just – it's all speculation. Russell Wilson and Ben Roethlisberger at quarterback. Nick Chubb, Mark Ingram, Marlon Mack, Chris Thompson, LaShawn McCoy, Benny Snell, and Gus Edwards at running back. Wide receivers, Michael Thomas, Juju Smith-Schuster, Cooper Cup, Sterling Shepard, Justin Jefferson, Sammy Watkins, and Dee Westbrook. Uh, tight ends are Hayden Hurst and Eric Ebron. Um, this, this squad, Dave, I, I'm a little bit worried at the tight end depth. Uh, I, I think he did a pretty good job taking these running back stabs late. I just don't know if it's enough um, to, you know, when you have Chubb and Ingram as your, as your starting two running backs and then receivers, uh, the top three are great. I, I'm not a big Shepard uh, Jefferson or Westbrook guy. I do like the Watkins pick later though. Yeah, actually with Todd, um, you can tell he's a high stakes player, not a pro because he, he did a nice job assembling, you know, the, the way he put the positions together with the tight ends and the quarterback, I thought he did an excellent job there. So if you don't like Hurst, you don't like Ebron, well, then that's a problem. But, I mean, getting Hurst, is, he's got a, you know, like a guy late in that tier. Wilson, same thing. He was the last quarterback out of those top six. So I, I actually like how his team turned out. I would have maybe taken a few different players in the spots where he took, let's say, Ingram. I would have taken Mostert or Singletary. He takes Chubb. I would have taken Aaron Jones. But, hey, that's just personal preference. Overall, I like how his team turned out if his rankings are correct. We talked to Shane Hallam earlier. Here's how his team ended up tonight. Jared Goff, uh, Drew Locke, and Tua Tungavailoa at quarterback. Running backs, Josh Jacobs, Leonard Fournette, Raheem Mostert, Philip Lindsay, Damian Harris, and Jarek McKinnon. Receivers, Kenny Galladay, Tyler Boyd, Deontay Johnson, Emmanuel Sanders, Debo Samuel, Steven Sims. And then the tight ends are George Kittle and Irv Smith. Oh, and Trey Burton, excuse me, uh, as well. I don't want to play favorites. This actually might be my favorite team thus far. Of and, and Shane already took called... a quick quarterback to the latest ball. You right. And, and that's why like, it's probably what it is. And I'm not just saying it because Shane called in tonight. You know, I, I look at all of his picks and they all actually make sense. Um, the Fournette and Mostert values. It's hard for me to get over that. That yeah, was really hard. good. Yeah, it's not, I mean, in like Boyd, I don't love Deontay Johnson, but I mean, I, fine. If he does, that's cool. But I mean, all, like all the picks, I mean, the, Lindsay in that, in that spot is a good pick. So, Debo Samuel's nice pick. Damian Harris makes sense. And then the McKinnon Mostert connection. too. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a well-crafted team. I agree with you. I like this team a lot. And, uh, you know, Shane, you know, Shane P. Hell, I'm your middle initial work. Yep. Good job. Um, just looking at this, just, I want to make one final comment about Shane's team, Dave, in a year where the off season's weird and we're it's like one of those movies in a year Yeah, in, in an off season. <laughs> That's basically non-existent to football. Um, Shane follows a lot. He, he, I mean, he writes and, and talks about Dynasty and Debbie Leagues. That, that, that is his job. Right. Took zero rookies. Yeah, it's smart. I think that's very smart. I, I think that's kind of what we've advocated. And, again, you can take some, a few rookies here and there, but if your team has six rookies out of 18, you, you might have some problems. All right, so moving on here to Matt Groth. Uh, talked to him earlier, too. Tom Brady. Matthew Stafford and Gardner Minshew at quarterback. Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Devin Singletary, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison at running back. Receivers are Adam Thielen, T.Y. Hilton, Jarvis Landry, John Brown, Deshaun Jackson, Hunter Renfro, and Josh Reynolds. Tight ends are Mark Andrews, Mike Jasicki, and O.J. Howard. Dave, just as I say, I think I like Shane's team best. We may have a new winner here because I think Matt Gross' team is really, really good as well. Yeah, he did. He did I mean, every pick was really was super strong. I mean... I, I, I like the I like the Reynolds and, and Renfro picks at the end of the draft. I mean, uh, everything everything's solid. I, I like his team top to bottom. Really, I can't I can't find anything wrong with it. I think what the, I mean, maybe, he, he, by the way, he did get gifted value in right, the first yeah. round, the Which, second I mean, round, he can't control. in the third round, and the fifth round, and maybe some other rounds I'm not paying attention to. Um, I, I don't know if I would have taken a third tight end. Maybe that that's the and that's I'm picking at nits here. Yeah, OJ Howard, that pick sucked. Well, I'm not saying it sucked. I just <laughs> I don't know if I would have done that. Yeah, whatever. That's given fine. he had Andrews and Jasicki, but he did bring up the diabetic thing with Andrews, which makes some sense. Jeremy Brown, Dynasty Football Factory here. Uh, it is Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, and Tyrod Taylor at quarterback. It is Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, Melvin Gordon, Tony Pollard, 
Anthony McFarlane and uh, yeah, at, at running back there, uh, Ty- Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen, Darius Slayton, Jalen Rager, and Jalen Hurd. Back to back Jalen's there at wide receiver, and then the tight ends are Jonu Smith, Dawson Knox, and Dan Arnold. Wasn't that um, uh, Roseanne? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wasn't yeah. that Dan Arnold on I the show? So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's I, every time I see that name, that's what I think of. Um, There's one player who I always see their name, and I think of somebody like that, but I, I'm trying to remember who it is now. No. I'll, we'll, I'll find it later. All right, fine. All right, so just assessing this team here, obviously I'm going to like it since he went back-to-back stud Wisconsin running backs here in the third and fourth round with yeah. Jonathan Taylor. Ron Dane in the 18th. And Melvin Gordon. Yeah, that's the one that was missing. Um, I like the receivers on this squad. Uh, the tight ends aren't my favorite, but to get Dawson Knox in, in the 13th, I, I like it, but – he probably will need a breakout from either Smith or Knox here to, to be competitive, uh, especially with that position. Yeah, his receivers are pretty strong, too. Tyree Kill, Diggs, Allen, Darius Slayton, and then the Jalens, you know, those guys. Nah, I can't count. You can't really count on them. No, you can't. Um, so, he need, he, so he's going to be – I think he might be – he might have to worry about the flex a little bit if there's a single injury to his team. So I think that's my concern. All right, so Chandler and Dalton Suprina, the penultimate team we're going to talk about tonight here, Dave. Drew Brees, Joe Burrow, and Sam Darnold at quarterback. Running backs are Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drake, Kareem Hunt, Matt Breida, Kishon Vaughn, Naheem Hines. Uh, receivers, DJ Moore, Allen Robinson, Marquise Brown, Julian Edelman, LaVisca Chenault, and T. Higgins. Uh, tight ends are Tyler Higbee, Jay Sternberger, and Will Disley. All right, I'm going to change my mind again. This, this is my pretty underrated, right? And here's why. We haven't talked about it much. Here's why. There are so many players on this team that I have talked up on the HSFF Hour over the course of this offseason. I've talked up DJ Moore, Allen Robinson, Kareem Hunt, Julian Edelman, Matt Breida, uh, Jay Sternberger, Naheem Hines, all these players. They must like, listen to the show. They, well, they must they, listen to you. They the must show. listen to me. They just tune you out, apparently. I, Not that, so. I mean, you like some of those players as well. But I just, I really like, this is a team that I could not only see myself drafting, team construction-wise, I could see myself drafting it player-wise. I mean, there's a lot of players I really like. Now, nah, there's a couple of duds that I don't like, too, but that's true of everybody. <laughs> well, all the running backs are pass catchers, if you look at it. Sanders, Drake, Hunt, Brita, Vaughn, Hines, every one of them. There's no big bruisers or, you know, none of those guys in there. Uh, yeah, I agree with you for the most part. They do need, I mean, let's keep in mind that they do need Higby, Sternberger, or Disley to really, you know, Higby has to stay the course. If he doesn't, they're in some deep trouble. Ah, that Sternberger, on Sternberger is like, don't I mean, worry about that. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. It's like, <laughs> you know, he's in Wisconsin guy. Sternberger's like a Wisconsin name. He sounds like he eats brats and stuff, but, uh, you know. Well, he, he doesn't play for the Packers, too. He so. doesn't, yeah, he doesn't done, hasn't done much yet. So, I mean, let's not get too Sternberger crazy here. Well, that, that happened for me in, like, February. I went Isn't Sternberger crazy. Actually, I went Sternberger crazy after the Packers did not take a tight end in the draft. Yeah, I mean. So, well, I guess they took Deguara, but they didn't take a, a first or second round tight end. Anyhow, it's, it's a nice team. Yeah, I like it. Rounding things up tonight here uh, with the 12th pick is four for fours, Peter Overzet. He gets uh, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers as his quarterbacks, Cam Akers, Zach Moss, Boston Scott, A.J. Dillon, DeAndre Washington, Darrington Evans at running back. Receivers are Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, A.J. Brown, Calvin Ridley, D.J. Chark, Nikhil Harry, James Washington. Tight ends are Hunter Henry, T.J. Hawkinson, and Cole Komet. Dave, um, we, we talked about this team earlier. It, I think it, it went according to what Overzet thought was going to happen. The question is, is can he get um, fortunate enough with a lot of these backup right, uh, running backs that he took? If he does, I think he's going to be okay. Uh, I like the tight ends and um, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the quarterbacks are, are going to be steady eddies as well. Yeah, I mean, this is not the way I would have drafted this team. He, like he, he had a strategy. If there's a lot of running back injuries – and it works out with Acres. He could be in really good shape. There's definitely standalone value with Zach Moss, Boston Scott, maybe AJ Dillon, and Darrington Evans is already getting talked up a bit as a pass catcher in that in that, in that backfield. So he he might have some standalone value too. I actually liked his. Uh, you know, I thought the Nikhil Harry and James Washington picks at receiver uh, made sense. I mean, it's, it, you know, you have those top guys. A lot of times people go so-called zero RB. They take four, then they wait like 12 rounds. And then everybody else is total garbage on their yep. team. Yeah. So I think he was thoughtful in that. In that. So I, I give Peter some credit for that. Uh, overall, the team turned out pretty good. I mean, I, it's hard for me to like it as much as some of the other ones. They're more well balanced, but uh, it's a good, nice squad overall, and it has a shot to compete for sure. And that's the point. Either go big or go home, right? And that's what Peter's going to do here. Too far out of my comfort zone for a best ball slim draft for me to absolutely love this team, Dave. But I do recognize the firepower and the ammunition that is simmering. 
uh, and, and sauteing <laughs> under Overzet's watch that could end up taking out the other 11 owners in this Very draft. Nice narrative. And that is the action uh, completed tonight here for Pros vs. Joe's number four, Fat Boy Slim. I want to thank my uh, callers tonight, my guests, Matt Groth, Shane Hallam, Robbie Russell. Good luck to you guys this season. I want to thank Darren Armani, Dave Gerzak, the FFPC, our producer and mutual friend Rob, our audio engineer, my best friend Bryce, and most of all, all of you listeners that were hanging out with us. Uh, we will be back tomorrow at 9, 8 central for Skinny Pete, number five. Uh, pros versus Joes going on tomorrow. Uh, the pros, excuse me, the Joes tomorrow. You have Mark Dinerman, Dan Fischeri, uh, Jared Hassan, and Jackie Dunk, Paul Friel and Greg D'Antonio, Sal Esposito, uh, Bippa Mandel and Kern Reeve, and then Eric Young and Aiken Moss teaming up uh, tomorrow for the Joe side. For the pros, John Daigle from Roto World, Draft Sharks, Matt Schauf, uh, Michael Leon from Establish the Run, and then you have player profilers Matt Kelly, uh, Number Balls, Nelson Sousa, and Graham Barfield from Fantasy Points. They will all be in action tomorrow. Wow, that is going to be a fun one for sure. 9-8 Central is where to be. Uh, remember to make your Planet Hollywood reservation. Sign up for the main event. $400 off each additional team. If you guys already grabbed one, make sure you're grabbing another one or two, uh, given those steep discounts. And then check out all the satellites, the best balls, the classics, the Terminators, uh, Dynasty Startups, Football Guys, Players, Championship, and more at MyFFPC.com. I know we got a midnight draft that we're trying to, uh, to fill, so make sure you're registering for that. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Your week officially this starts now. This has been now. another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. You know, we had Shane on before, Dave. I asked him who the 101 should be. I forgot I actually have the 102 in another draft, so maybe I should ask him who he's taking on 102. He said Jonathan Taylor, though, didn't he? Yeah, Taylor, yeah. It when, but to, to he likes Taylor over, either equals or over Hilaire, it seemed like. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, with the, with the additional assets that you can get by trading down. You may it, like him independently of the additional assets. And the point, because he was willing to trade – which I would not do. I mean, he was willing to trade down from 101 to 102, just even getting a second, which I would not do. I would require the first. All right. Um, but I do like Jonathan Taylor. I mean, in the early drafts, I I got Taylor in a few spots. One league, I gave up a future first to move up to the 107 from the 112 because Taylor was inexplicably still there. I traded with our friend Jeff Turbasi, Cornfins in the Fantasy Sharks League, uh, giving up a 2021 first from the 112 to the 107, getting, and I took Taylor. Um, I have... Uh three drafts this week and I didn't trade any first round picks, Dave 101, 102, and I think 111. Nice. One of those teams is doing better than the other two. <laughs> Play that right now. Yeah, that's all right. Talk to you nine, eight central tomorrow. This has been fun. Uh, make sure you're uh, tuning in for that. Thanks for listening, everybody.